So I'm like here with Kevin. <laughs> yeah. Why do you call them clients? Because they're clients. You like that word? <laughs> I can't call. I mean, it's different from like customers, you know. There's actually, yeah, there's a real yeah. difference. Yeah. You know, I think I, it's like a, the money, like. At a certain, like, whatever you spend, I think it becomes a client. No, nah, it's actually the type of relationship you have with them. Like, when you have a client, a customer you're just selling something to. Yeah. yeah, yeah. A client, it's like you're, you're working servicing. for them. True. You're servicing True. them. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, if you're a real estate agent, you know what I mean? You kind of, like, there's, like, a legality behind them being your client. You know, yeah. you kind of, like, always have to be thinking about their best interests aside from yours. Where with us, we're like, you know. That's you what I need. do. You, know, you might not to find need that extra interest. panel, but I'm giving it to you, baby. <laughs> well, you don't call them clients? I call, call them, them fucking buyers or liars. <laughs> <laughs> Are you a uh, buyer or a liar, uh, Mr. Uh, Jones? <laughs> What's up, bullshit? Like Dior? Man, you just fucking hitting these chain yeah. outlets, huh? After the five glasses. My man, no, the other ones were Versace, bro. No, you're those, just are, going those to, are sunglasses. You're just like, yo, can you just, whatever you have with the biggest logo Remember on the side. I, I told you I bought these at Bling. I don't know what Bling is. Oh, yeah, bro. Garden City, How much bro. money you got to make to go into a store called Bling, bro? <laughs> <laughs> like, where'd you get those shoes at? Store called Rich. <laughs> I do like them, though. Bling. Yeah, There's a City. sunglass hut in Garden City. That's where I got mine. Mm. That's how I know my summer was great, bro. Like, I walk in, I buy shades... And Sasha's like at another store. I'm like, hey, you want sunglasses? She's like, yeah. I go, all right, come in. You know, just I gave the fucking worker lady my card. Yeah. Like my wife's gonna come in, and let her grab, you know, what she wants. Yeah. I walk outside and it's like I'm looking for a spot to sit. I sit down and it's just like, bro, it's like Wednesday or some shit. I sit down and I'm just sitting on this patio, and the dude comes out and he's like, hey, can I help you? I'm like, no, nah, I'm all sad. I don't need anything. And he's like, oh, you know, this is not, like, just a sitting area. It's our outdoor patio. You kind of have to order. I'm like, all right, just yeah. bring me a bottle of wine and, like, cheesecake or something. I was like, what? <laughs> oh, <laughs> fuck it. Like, I knew my girl would like both of those things when she yeah, came yeah, out. Yeah, so yeah, was, yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. I miss summer, man. It's this coming, is, too. I know. This is, this is always the, the most depressing time of year for me yeah. because it's right there. You know what I mean? Like, it's fucking, it's right there, but we still get, and then you get teased, you know? Like, dude, yeah. last year in March... We had a fucking day that was 70-something degrees. I don't know if you remember. Yeah. 70 degrees, and I'm like, here it is. It's it. Like, I had the fucking pink like Hawaiian shirt and p shorts on, bro, and then it was like 30 for the next two months. My boy was ready for summer that day. Yeah, I really was, man. I am yeah. now. Even last week, dude, I took my bike out last week for one day, and now here we are. Yeah. Actually, what? Well, yesterday was the first snow that we had in but it's, it's not even snow, bro. It's just yeah. the cold. Like, think everybody's just happier in the summer. You know what I mean? The days are longer. There's literally like more vitamin D for everyone, bro. Yeah. Everybody mm. needs more D. Mm. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> That's how I stay so healthy, bro. Yeah. yeah. I'll take it in pill form too. I don't give a shit. D in pill form? Pill form, sun, anally, whatever. <laughs> 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 like I take my no, but it's like, think about it, bro. It's like, what are you like in the winter? Like, you know what else I love in the summer, bro? Fucking that spot where we just Naked go get the women? mimosas. Oh, yeah. every Sunday, bro, I just get brunch go and on mimosas. The, go on the water? No, nah, no, nah, I go to um a spot in Coventry called the Black Oak. Okay. Yeah, and dude, I call it like bottle service for grown ups. You know what I mean? Because yeah. it's I, literally they just bring you a champagne in a fucking ice bucket, and then those like bottles, decanters of mixers yeah. that you want to mix with it. Yeah. I mean, I'm just like, oh, this is legit. I feel like this summer, I'm going <coughs> to sacrifice the summer and fucking work my balls off. Okay. Enjoy it, bro. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I that's the best time, out. you know? That's when everybody's happy and shit. It's emotional, you know? Like, I really right, hope let's do you, it. I hope y'all do it. <laughs> <laughs> All <laughs> right, sun's out. Let's do it. <laughs> I think, yo, I think to be honest with you, that you'll actually perform better if you balance it perfectly. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. And you that's enjoy true. the shit out of it. Yeah. Because, yo, it's so easy to say, I'm going to work seven days a week. And then give 30% for all seven days, and yeah, then you're just I like, what it. the fuck is this? That's true. Or you can give 100% three days from fucking, you know, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., yep. and then just ball out on the fucking other four days and enjoy it. Nah, that's true. I mean, I feel like the, what we do is, like, it's a lot of mental, you know, mental Oh, for sure. It's all mental. Like, yeah. No physical. Unless yeah. you're me. Like, what do you mean by that? When you say, like, mental? Like, walking around the like, house Like, after, like, four days that I speak with clients, it's like, I'm mentally drunk. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't want to do nothing, Bro, you got I just want to go home, just just do bullshit. Like, just scroll through my phone. Yeah. Nobody talk to me. Like, four that's days how of, I be. Did you get some? Yeah. 
four days of talking to clients, yeah. listening to welcome calls, oh. fucking going over the same conversation. Yeah, it can definitely get draining, bro. It's very draining, and then that's bro. on top of like you know if pre uh, older clients are calling you and saying, hey, yeah. what asking questions. And Yo, that's. Dude, when people, it's funny, right? Because a lot of people, you know, bring that up about how busy they are dealing with old shit. And I was fortunate enough to not really have much of that. Mm. That's, dude, it's so important to set the, I mean, it, it really depends on how you want to handle your book of business. Yeah. Because with me, like, anytime I finished up with a, a, a customer, I would always tell them, like, hey, this is what I do, right? Like, I'm on the road. You see what it was like for the last two, three hours I was here? Yeah. I didn't look at my phone once. Yeah. And this is my day, 40 hours a week, you know, like five days a week. So I'm like, unless it's like, unless you need me directly or if it's like you want to sign somebody up, huh? like if you're just looking for <laughs> updates, don't get me wrong. You're always open to hit me up, text me, email me or call me. But if you just want an answer quickly, here's the people you need to contact because they're going to get you the answer. If you go through me, I'm probably not going to see your text or email for like two days and then I'm going to reach out to the same people I'm telling you to reach to. Yeah. So again, don't think there's no communication. I'm happy to help. I'm just really looking out for your best interest if you want the info quicker. Yeah. yeah, because you don't, man. Like it, it's it can get really taxing on you, bro. When they're it just is. calling you and they're like, "Hey, so it's been like six hours and I haven't heard anything. What's going on?" Yeah, you're like, "Bro, I just left." <laughs> like, <laughs> you know what I mean? But they will, and it's not no fault of them, you know, because they're they're just like they don't have the right expectation. But if yeah. you said it correctly and like, listen, the yeah. line that I like to use, I'm gonna be like, "Don't worry, it is very common for you not to hear anything, anything for the next thirty to forty five days." You're not forgotten about. There's just a lot of back end shit going on. It's like imagine if you took your car off to get the engine replaced and you checked in with the mechanic every 15 minutes. He'd be like, "What the fuck are you doing?" You know what I mean? Like this is gonna take a lot longer than that. So like I try to let them know, like don't expect to hear from anything yeah. for at least a month. You know what I mean? Well, you're setting the expectation. That's the most important thing. Exactly. So some people don't do that at no. all. You know, some people just call me anytime, day yeah, and night. And I don't got answer. you. <laughs> yeah, and they don't answer, bro. Or they answer and they're pulling the hair out. Yeah, you know I mean, they're just what the yeah. fuck's going on, dude? Everybody's calling me because they can fucking tell you them know, to. I, I think it's like pretty interesting, just the dynamic, like that. So, uh, so many different personalities and, yeah. and like, uh, yeah, different walks of life that you meet. And, like, some you, like, really bond to because they're, like, just cool as shit. Mm -hmm. Others are just, like, a whole different, like, it's foreign to you how they live their life and, you know, how they conduct themselves. And, um, you know, it's just, it's so interesting, uh, that whole dynamic, uh, just being, being in, yeah, in home people. sales and all that shit. Yeah. It's like sometimes I walk into people, I'm like, how do you live like this? Like, it's, <laughs> like, absurd. Other people are like, uh, all right, I walk in, like, damn, I want to live like you, you know, in a yeah, nice house. Yeah, exactly. It's like you meet different people every day. That's pretty I, cool. I always make it a point. Like, when I walk into someone's home <coughs> and oh, they're, home, like, me. if their home looks like Pier 1 Imports, I, I, it blows me away. I'm like, wow, you really keep your home, like, yeah. clean as fuck. Like, do yeah. you even live here, <laughs> bitch? Like, yeah. <laughs> like, it looks like an interior decorator lives Bro. here. I'm like, I sat with this lady, man. Her name is Modesta, and I remember the fucking like husband's She's name Irish. is Sergio. When I tell you, we went to the hood, like yeah. not we, like I went to this appointment. It was like fucking, you know, if you're um, yeah, what do they call that part of Providence, bro? It's like a shitty part right near Cranston. Johnston? There used to be a Cadillac dealership over there. Near Cran Wait, where's it at? Near what? Near Roger Williams, like that area. Roger Williams. Wait. Yeah, um, oh, it's yeah, just yeah, like bro. Yeah, so okay, they call yeah, it was yeah, it yeah. Clown City or there's Clown a lot Town of, like, or some shit like that. There's a lot of Spanish people around there. Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I would assume what are you so. To say, yeah. There's I mean, bodegas everywhere. <laughs> I know, I know where we're at. You know, <laughs> bro. That's what I'm saying. It's like <laughs> you go to East Providence, we're not there. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's not Johnson. No, it's not. It's not Westerly. Nah, it's not Westerly. Yeah. Nah, but I'll tell you what, the food and the music is gonna be hitting in these areas. But anyway, so you just you you kind of like you don't judge a book by its cover. But when you walk into a house. You don't. You expect the inside to look a certain way. Of course. And when I tell you, what is that looks, expectation? Uh pretty similar to the outside of the house. You know what I mean? <laughs> like I would assume, like, bro, if you're in like a neighborhood where like most of the houses are like shitty on the outside yeah. and they're older, it's they don't look updated. Be on the inside. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, that's a I fair assumption. Yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? I think so. Like, think about it. If you walk into a, the inside, like the outside of somebody's house, the landscaping is fucking money. Yeah. The paint is clean. The shutters, everything is fresh. You expect the inside to be updated. Of course. Of course. This is just like, you know, old yeah, vinyl yeah. siding, messy, bad <laughs> roof. I walk in, bro. When I tell you, dude, this fucking kitchen on this woman, uh, in this woman's house, looked like it belonged in Newport Beach, California. <laughs> I sat with her for like 20 minutes and I'm like, yo, I have to take a video. I have to show my wife this kitchen. <laughs> yeah. Like everything was crazy. The was fucking woodwork and then the cabinetry, okay. like the fridge, like didn't even, didn't look like a fridge. It looked like cabinets. Yeah. Everything had gold trim, bro. Like the yeah. faucets were, I was like, yo, this doesn't make sense. I'm like, she's like, 
I go, I have to ask, like, what's up with the outside? She's like, I don't want motherfuckers to know what it's like inside. Like, <laughs> look where I live. I'm like, okay, right. touche. That makes sense. Yeah, and yeah, I, it's yeah. like, it brought me back to when I was younger, man. Like, I would always deck out the sound system in my car, and I still do. But I make sure it looks like stock, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, when I was younger, I didn't want you to see the screen and see everything. Yeah. Some motherfuckers break your windows and take your shit. Yeah. She's like, you think I want them knowing how much, like, you know, we actually have in here? Look where we are. Yeah. I was like, good point, good point. That's true. You ever walk into a home and it's like, smells like, Fucking love it smells like smell. No, no, not that kind of love. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> just smell, that smells like latex and shit. You interrupted, like, the, hus- you interrupted the husband no, and that, wife. That, that, that kind of love. I'm saying, like, <laughs> it just smells like fucking, for the solar. <laughs> I, I, you're like, what is that fucking? Uh, it's just like it's so aromatic, like it's potpourri. Like, yeah, like potpourri. potpourri. Like, like nobody nah, knows like, what the fuck potpourri is, bro. My my boy in the service, he was trying to say that he was like, oh, it smells like porta potty in here. Cool. I'm like, what? You, what? He's, I'm like, you mean pot- potpourri? He goes, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yo, potpourri. Is, does any is there like an actual recipe to that, or do you just crunch leaves and wood and? I shit, think you like, just cr- you just shit, grab yeah. whatever in nature you can put in there, bro. Yeah, you take some dead wood and go like that, and it falls some soil, <laughs> like cloves and fucking potpourri. Cinnamon. Is fucking weird, bro. But yeah, we talked about it too when Hannah and Kayla were here, man. And then sometimes you walk into a house and they have like the puppy pee pads all yeah, over the place. And you're like, what the fuck stinks. is this, man? Oh, yeah. Man, yeah. Stink, yo, stinky houses are, are one of the trickier ones, man, where I can't. It's it's hard, bro. It's hard to not prejudge, you know, because. You're you, just like, hey, hi, I'm here for solo. Let's run your credit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, it's like you're, you're kind of judging a book by its cover. But I mean, sometimes I'm surprised, you know. I oh, like yes. Yeah, so, two weeks and, ago, I went to Burville. A guy was just like, the way he lived, it was just like shit. I was like, oh, all right. And then he ended up paying cash, like for a system. I'm like, all right. See, sometimes you can't like, out of his me. wallet. Yeah, no. Nah, <laughs> <right. laughs> he's, he's like, all right, bro. Here. <laughs> he gave you like an actual Bitcoin. You're like, I've never seen one of these, bro. <laughs> no, no. It was, like, I, was just sort of I only out. have this gold bar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I like yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, it's weird. You 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 get to meet a lot of cool people, man. It's, which I do miss that sometimes being in the field, but. You meet a lot of fucking weirdos fresh. too, bro. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Like, well, every day is different. Be- that's the beautiful thing about it, man. It's like, you you made a great point, too. We were talking about what you used to do and what you do now. And it's almost like most of us that are in solar now are making a lot more dough than we were before. Mm-hmm. But it's almost like even if you weren't, even if, you're, even if your income stayed the same or right. even if it dipped, your quality of life is just so way much better. better. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Like, imagine, bro, like, just if I told you, like, hey, Kevin, the solar shit's going away. Starting tomorrow, you got to work five days a week, every week consecutively, and that alarm's going off at quarter or six in the morning. You'd be like, yo, yeah. wait yeah, a second. Yeah. I'd be homeless. Fuck it. I'm not doing it. <laughs> I'm not doing yeah. it, bro. <laughs> like, you got someone everything. just watching you right on top of you, making sure you're doing your job right. Oh, like, my God. Yeah, like cracking the fucking What did you do before work. this? I worked at Bank of America. It was corporate so as it gets. It was uh, as corporate as it gets. I mean, I You might know, Mike. Like, were you up, up in the chain or just kind of... I mean, it was just like a sales rep. I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, but it was over the phone. So we had like a call. You didn't work somewhere. for Omar, did you? No, I don't Do think you so. know Omar? Omar. Pies? No. Oh. No. He's also Spanish. I was thinking the same exact shit. I was like, <laughs> no, there's more to it. He just was like, he's he, Spanish? Nah, he managed, <laughs> he managed like the call center at Bank of America. Okay. So I figured no. maybe there'd be some. No, I don't think so. No. no. <laughs> he's like, just because he's Spanish, like, you know, there's two billion <laughs> of us. <bro." laughs> That's what I love when you tell people you're in the service. They're like, oh, do you know? You're like, no, shut the fuck up. Right? I, don't, I don't know them. Dude. There's yeah, no way. Speaking of the service, man, I started watching that Netflix special, Medal of Honor. You guys. That's on Netflix? Yeah. Well, that's, bro, it's that's not a Netflix. That's, that's an old show. Is it? It's like a docuseries. Yeah, bro. You know, that used to. Bro, it's crazy because that used to be a video game and I was in love with that. And I found out there was a docuseries. Yeah. And I immediately got it hard, bro. I was like, can't wait to watch it. And. I never watched it. Like you, I never did. you just reminded me of it, bro. And you, I'm excited now that I can watch it. Bro, I'm, it? I'm um I'm blown away by like so I watched the first episode, like the shit that these guys have, you know, did or do. Continue right. talking about making them a drink. I'm listening though. I'm listening. Oh. Can we bring up the uh, Medal of Honor? Yeah. You want ice? No, I'm good. Like these right to the good dudes stuff. fucking like are rushing the enemy, getting shot like four times, fall, you know, and get, then getting back up, running towards them again. I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck? Were you a superhuman? <laughs> I like what it. is it? Uh, yeah, something like yeah, sure. You know what's cool is so we we've tapped into a lot of 
what our tech capabilities are, Jay. Like right now, we found a way where we can all hear this. One thing that you're gonna learn in combat. Like there's something that so the guests can hear this video playing right now, but we can't. Yeah, Literally, this dude just running towards the enemy. Like just. Oh wait, no, I think Netflix did remake it, and it's a lot more modern yeah. now. Oh yeah, bro. For sure. And this is already out. That doesn't, that doesn't look old. Yeah, that's definitely no, I might be thinking of something called Band of Brothers. Actually, that dude was a badass. That black dude, Barack Obama. <laughs> yeah. Who's that? Robert De Niro. But um, there, there's something that like, there, there's a switch that's flipped when when it's like fight or flight, and they're just like, fuck it. yeah, bro. I'm just gonna <laughs> fucking I, whatever happens happens. You know what's it's funny, right? Because you're seeing that at its at its maximum. Like the most dramatic form. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's some shit that happens to everyday humans all the time, always. What do you mean you get shot at? Yeah. No, like your adrenaline overrides what you should be feeling. Oh, for like, like logical pain. thinking? Like you play soccer. Yeah. How many times have you ever just been in the game and you get home and you realize like, yo, my ankle I don't ankle think that is... compares to that. No, 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 but there's a scale. I'm, I'm just trying to like relate it to everyday people. I'm about to, to kick a ball. People. If I would kick a ball, then I'm good. If I'm Let me ask you though. <laughs> have you ever been in a situation where you didn't realize something hurt as much as it did because your adrenaline was pumping? Uh, when I cut my foot open, yeah, once. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying. It's like the same concept, you know. I, like, I know where you're yeah, going. But that's it's like just life or death, yeah. you know. <laughs> well, it is. It is life or death, but it's the same. It's the same body function happening. You yeah. know, like you're you're just being pumped with endorphins and adrenaline. Yeah. And Very it's minimal. Though. Very minimal. What do you mean? Like compared to what they're they're facing. And I feel like that's just like life. Uh, or yo, death, I mean, that's... facing, yeah, but I think everybody reacts to shit a different way. <laughs> I think you know? there was the second episode where. Um, there was I'm a, like, you ever stub your toe and not notice it? <laughs> Walk through that the, like a the fucking adrenaline boss, rush. Bro. There was Give me a open, metal, a, a, literally an open metal field. Hunting. Enemies like you know, let's say 200 yards facing you, and it's just there's no cover, no concealment, just open field. That's and crazy. they were ordered to like, hey, you gotta, this, we gotta go this way, right, right through them. That's crazy. Is and there a way around? Nope. <laughs> the, the sergeant, this black dude, he was just like, all right, I'm gonna run like 200 yards to the left and then flank them. <laughs> like what, dude? Are you fucking crazy? <laughs> and he just does. He gets shot in the fucking shoulder, shot in the leg. He's bleeding all over the place. Still running at them, shooting like fucking Rambo. What was that movie? Um, it's a lot easier now. War. You're just like, all right, we're gonna kill all those people. Boop, boop. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> I wonder. I wonder if the Medal of Honor will like go away. Like, how do you earn the Medal of Honor anymore if there's no like? You type seventy words a minute. You dropped like, 70 bombs cyber a minute. Attack. <laughs> cyber attack. You were going to say something? Were you? Yeah, it was, what was that movie, Finding... Uh, Nemo? <laughs> no. Uh, Saving Private Ryan, was it? Oh, that's an oh, old yeah, 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 yeah. Saving Ryan's Private. Yeah. The scene, bro, when he fucking snipes a dude through the scope. Yeah, that's yeah, a dope that was scene. fucking awesome. You guys well, I was thinking more of like when all the they're all in like going to the sea. And like they know they're just about to die. Oh yeah, bro. And they're just getting shot at. Like, that's like motherfuckers that. Imagine were... being on that that's boat. What that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, you know you're, you're, you're done. Like you're, dead. you're done. Like you're the first one. Like you're like a sitting duck. I'm like that's crazy. Yeah, that's wild. We used to man. practice uh, this thing I'm called. Sure it, was uh, called like, it was an acronym called shit. MOUT M O U T M O U T Mili Military Operations in Urban you Terrain, can, where it's pretty much SWAT, right? So we would what they call a stack. It was like five people before you like bust into a door. Whatever's easier. And the first person into a room was called the point man. And I'm like, damn, I don't want to be the point man. Yeah, that's like crazy. You, you would stack up outside the door and you do like a, a bounce, like yeah. one, two, three, well, and then move in. You're the motherfucker that's going to let them know if the room is clear and yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, like, I'm not going to be the first one. If in he there, doesn't get that. shot, it's safe. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. That takes some like steel fucking balls to know that you're, you're about to just. Yeah. The thing is, is bro, when you once you get to that point, <coughs> excuse me, it almost doesn't take balls. You just no longer really have a choice. You know what I mean? True. Yeah. It's like, what are you gonna do? Yeah. Say no and make somebody else do it. It's like, yeah. it's just, so dishonorable. Like when you think about it, you're just accepting your fate at that point. You know, all right, I'm gonna like fuck it. Yeah. I'm there's just die. there's there's no. It's like there's, there's no, no alternative. Yeah. Right. It's like, hey man, it's a shit situation. I drew the unlucky straw. Well, you could turn bitch and just be like, you know, all right, I'm not going. <laughs> <Nah>. <laughs> Some people do. I mean, you know, yeah. It's again, it's that fight or flight. Some people flight. Yeah, that's true. Bitches, bitch ass <laughs> bitch. Anywho, so Kevin, 
a lot of people don't know this about you, or maybe they do. I don't know. I don't know if Jay knew that you were a TikTok celebrity. <laughs> I knew that was going to be brought up. Did you know that? <laughs> bro, it up. has Let's to be brought it. up, bro. It has to be. Let's see it. It has to be. Dude, he's got like, what do you got, like 40K? Uh, yeah, you don't I even talk about like, it, huh? Uh, doing like, what? What are you doing? Uh, hey, take your shirt off. What do you mean, what's he doing? Take my shirt off. All right, click that one. Click that one right let there. Let people watch it, you know? This one right here? Yeah. Uh... How many? <laughs> okay. Yeah. How many views? How many views this thing uh, have? I mean, I think that one's like I don't know. Oh, I use I use that Halo top. So your 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 TikTok is around fitness and shit. Yeah, it's centered around fitness. Um, I feel like f ever since after. <laughs> <laughs> well, why you look at me like that? I was about to say something. Jay's you know? getting, getting wet. <laughs> <Right, man. laughs> no, after. Um, so here's the thing. I've always been. I've always played soccer, right? And I feel like any any athlete who transitions from like being from a young from a young age just playing sports like An with a team, yeah, right? you don't even realize how you're always conditioning your body, and then eventually, exactly, you don't want it to just. Well, here's my thing. After college, you got two options. After college, yeah, after college, you know, I just <laughs> I got fat. You know, I wasn't playing no more. I didn't have that team environment that would push myself. So you got any? Pictures from when you were fat. I'd like to see uh, what you consider yeah, fat. Yeah, if you scroll down a little, uh, scroll down you scroll more. Scroll down to the before. <laughs> there's section. A, if you scroll scroll down, down to where there's no views. <laughs> Nobody was looking. No, no, at no. I ass. have a couple of them. Oh, Let me right here. Yeah, yeah, right Damn, there. Damn, bro. <laughs> He's like, I got one. <laughs> <laughs> I found it. <laughs> yeah. Um, Took the bulk too far. He says that was like when I was just bulking. So then it was just a transition to. Um, Are you getting section. paid? No, nah, uh, very minimal. I mean, TikTok yeah. is You've just... You've made a few bucks, though? A few bucks, you know. That's nothing, cool. You know, just to guess a couple of costs. That's how you there. sign so many motherfuckers. you like, look <laughs> at my TikTok. Check out my page. <laughs> check out, that's check how, out my uh, abs. This sign is here. one of the images they should have used for your billboard. Right? I don't know why you have a shirt on ever, to be honest with right? you. Right, that's true. I think the one... Right, I don't know bro. I just never wear a shirt, bro. I'd walk around. Just go in there, just like, yo, guys, look. Everywhere, bro. They'd be like, oh, you need yeah, a shirt to come yeah, in this yeah. store. I would just put on the, put a shirt over my shirt. Click on that one shirt. that says uh, results of how we're at the poker got table. You took your shirt off? I think oh, that yeah, one that is fun. the one next you to that. You put that one. on TikTok. No, the other one? To it's the on right? Facebook. Yeah, right there. Click on that one. <laughs> no, it's not. I took it off. Yeah. Oh, dude. I think it? it's, uh, I have a picture there because I was like really fat. Right there. You can see I'll just. Oh, you're starting to look like me over there. <laughs> Let's not get carried away. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I was like, I was. Yeah. So you, you, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Yeah, you really leaned out there, man. Yeah, that's sexy. So walking on the incline, big. So, you recommend so the shit the out thing, of that? It's like I got a treadmill over there. Maybe yeah. I'll have it up. It's like a lot of people. <laughs> Maybe I'll use it. <laughs> I've used it a few times. That was the last time you used it? Under a month, over two weeks. Okay. Okay. All right. So what is your whole thing? It's, it's fitness, whatever. Are you showing a transformation? Or? Uh, it's a mix of like transformation. So I feel like what a lot of people are looking is to connect. Uh, right. I think that's with anything. Be relatable. 1.7 yeah, yeah. million you know? views that video got, bro. Where, uh, where, got, holy shit. Which one? What's the What's the most views on one video? Uh, 1.5 million. I got no, three I'm looking at 1.7 right now, where? guy. Top left. Oh yeah, 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 that was my first one. So that, so all the other videos yeah, before. Yeah, that's the first one you went. That's big. when I just went viral. I got like ten thousand followers off that, and it was just posting consistency, you know. Just posting consistency, bro. And then the right fucking, yeah. the right algorithm picks it up, bro, and people start liking it, kind of. Yeah. I got one video He's with like one hundred and fifty. <laughs> I got like one hundred and fifty k. You gotta do it, to, you know. <laughs> <laughs> But Look it's just about consistency, you know? <laughs> yeah, I yeah, feel yeah. like there's there's a uh, certain, like, uh, algorithm. Ooh, bro, you even got the dick root going on. <laughs> Where it's like, uh, you got to put, like, a good caption and a really quick video. That's what TikTok is, you know? You can't just be there for, like, a minute and just nah, explain nah. everything. Bro, I, I was telling a quick. few of my boys, man, they'll send me a video, and if I see that slider start playing at the bottom, yeah, I just skip it. I'm like, yeah, no, yeah. the video's too long. Because we have such a short attention span now. It's yeah. like, you got to make your point quick. That's yeah, why, bro, and, and what you're saying, right, kind of goes into a lot of how we design these episodes. That's why you've already seen me say it once, and I'll, I'll probably say it multiple times. I'll just remind Brandon, you know, he's, he changes our angles and shit. Yeah. I'm like, yo, make sure you're constantly changing because people will really be watching, bro, and if they see a stagnant view too long, they're it's just like, like this yeah, is whack. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. We just need to always be stimulated, bro. That and, that, and, and actually the conversation, too. Like, if you just keep rambling on, like, about the same bored. shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's how it's the same thing with TikTok. You just got to make your point, cut across, max 10 seconds. How long ago done. was your um, 
that 1.7, let's say the before or whatever, when you started. That huh? was 2020, like end of 2021. Oh, so you've been doing this a couple of years and I mean, a year and a half. So I was really into it like 2022. I feel like I haven't been really putting too much effort into it because of solar. Right, I've right. I've just been focusing on that. Yeah. So I was like pre-solar, so I had time, you know, to do everything. I just yeah. don't have, like I said, we were talking about it was like mentally draining. Yeah. I don't want to go and shoot a video at the end when I'm finished with clients, you know. You right, pulling a lot of ass out of this or what? Of course, man. On, <laughs> Female? It's not, it's not the, it's not the <laughs> TikTok, it's the body, you know, it just... Combination of both. Yeah. You know? They like the clout. Nah, I don't use it to my They like the clout and the stout. Nah, I don't. Like, sometimes when we go out, like, you know, hang out with, like, Caesar and James, they're like, yo, you got 40K uh, views on TikTok. I'm like, bro, you didn't even say that. You don't, don't I could pull out my own. I don't pull, out the, pull out the big <laughs> Only one required, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Only, only required. required. Oh, yeah. After you get six nos, you say, yeah, all right. Yeah, all right, let's pull it up. <laughs> yo, so was there ever a chance where you thought, like, fuck it, like, I'm going to be able to make a living off of this? No. Um, no? Pre solar, maybe. After solar, well, no. until, until, <laughs> until the style of living changes, yeah. you're like, you're like oh, I could probably get by on like 70k from TikTok yeah, a year. Well, no, nah, nah, if you got like fucking huge, huge, like took so you, you went from oh yeah, there are some people that make millions, to, you know, to Y to where you're at right now, and then if you got like fucking, you know, like well, I mean, well, the bodybuilder type. Uh, the trick is to you. What you do is you take like, bro, there are millionaires, maybe even Mr. Beast has to be close to a billionaire. You yeah. know what I mean? Like there are motherfuckers that make crazy livings off of this because what you do is like obviously you get all the exposure you build your brand and then you parlay that into exactly. almost anything yeah, yeah, that you want you know what i mean it's just building a brand like fucking mr beast bro my kids go crazy to order his cheeseburgers that's crazy you know what they are <laughs> literally bro how genius of this he like signed contracts with all these local restaurants yeah and says hey like i'm gonna stock you up right with fucking like all of these little cheeseburgers all you gotta do is pop them in the microwave or whatever like they're so simple to make mm. and i'm gonna put it as mr beast burger on grubhub your kitchen staff will keep x amount of money i'll yep. keep like 10 percent. but it's like bro because his brand is so big like my kid's gonna be paying 16 dollars for a shitty cheeseburger yeah it's all about just branding finding the right partners but i never think i got like i never thought i got i would get to that point where you know i'd be living off tiktok it was more of just like Sharing my Are you experience. trying to? Are you intentional? No, about it or no, no. I mean, at this point, no. I'm just trying to help people out. You know, just putting out some some Why, tips, some advice. Shredded in that one, huh, bro? With the blue shirt. Yeah. Click, bro, click on that one, Brandon. Holy fuck, guy. Look at that. So oh, oily and shit. So, so oh, tell us a <laughs> oh, oily and shit. I was just giving <laughs> advice if you're just trying to get shredded. So you tell us do. some like just like some key points. Like what what are you doing? Obviously, we know that you're dieting, exercising, that kind of thing. Yeah. But what exactly? Like what what kind of foods are you eating? Are you high protein? Yep. Low carb. Yeah. Yeah, Write yeah, down yeah. all um, of your macros on this. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think exercising like, what yeah. I every day, it, three to four times a week. Like if someone's listening to this podcast and they're trying to lose weight, like I go out to like the mainstream person. You know, <laughs> yeah, but you're not trying to lose it's, weight. Um, True. It goes back to just life. You just gotta know what you're doing. You just gotta be educated about it. So one is um you gotta know what your calorie maintenance is. Everyone has a calorie maintenance. Right, right. They give it as like a budget. Like yeah, yeah, on yeah. a day, if I give you two thousand dollars, if you go over that, you're just gonna gain weight. If so you go same, under it, you're gonna lose weight. You're gonna lose weight, exactly. So everybody has a calorie, uh, calorie maintenance. So you gotta find that calorie how many calories you're supposed to eat in a day. And then just know what type of foods you're eating. So a lot of people eat out there junk food that has six, seven hundred calories in just one serving. Mm. Obviously, if you're trying to lose weight and you're doing that multiple times throughout the day, you're just going to go over your calorie budget and you're just going to gain weight. So things that help out is a high protein diet because they're low in calories and they make you feel fuller. Full. Satiated. Right? Yeah. Satiated. That's the thing. When you're eating high carbs, you're not feeling <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> I know why he's laughing. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, You don't feel satiated, right? So that's why you keep overeating and you're going over that that maintenance of, of uh, what you're supposed to be eating in a day. I like it. Yeah, I actually have um, a health coach three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. She put me onto this app. We started tracking. Like she gave me that number is like twenty seven hundred and something calories exactly. every every day. Yep, yep. So now and she bro the app she put when I told you I thought it was gonna be hard counting all the calories, but I can literally fucking put Dave's killer bread, yep. three fried eggs, this much of a cream cheese. You know what I mean? Right and it just app. maps it all out, bro. Yeah, on the app it does it for you. You know what's it called? Macros or some shit. I think you can use My Fitness Pal. There's a I bunch use, of apps. The that one you can I use is Macros first. Yeah. But when I tell you, man. Since she st like we started doing that, what helped me the most, bro, is like correcting throughout the day, yeah. knowing that like because when it, without it, it's like driving somewhere without a map. Exa that's exactly you know what, I mean? what it is. And it was like, bro, it would let me take those 
those days where I'm like, fuck, like I just kind of like went OD on lunch and had a lot of pasta. You put it in and it's like, all right, the day is not torched now. You just have to fucking correct the rest of the Realize. day. And exactly. like, you know, yeah. you're going to have to go super high protein with no, like dinner's going to suck because you went overboard on lunch. Exactly. So just eat a lot of fucking tuna and skip the rice for dinner or whatever. Hey, can, can we pull up my yeah. TikTok? <laughs> <laughs> What's Why your TikTok? You What's your, I haven't seen your TikTok. I'm just like, uh, <laughs> I was like, oh, you got a TikTok, okay. Yeah, but, uh, you my was, shirt off. Was, <laughs> was the most surprising for me, bro, is actually how hard it is to get the amount of protein that I should be having every day. Yeah, I yeah. thought that was gonna be easier, yeah. but it's like by the end of the day, dude, I'm always like 60 grams short. Exactly. And she's like, bro, you gotta put in like shakes what, or 20, whatever. 25 per meal. I mean, how many? <clears> how many meals that's how you can structure it around 20 grams, you know, yeah. a meal. You know, you got mm. your yogurt, like two yogurts, that's 30 right off the bat. Yo yogurts, bro. You don't like yogurt? I said, I love me some yogurt. Yeah. The Greek yogurt. Quinoa? Um, quinoa uh -huh. is really good. I mean, chicken, obviously, is mainstream. Steak, chicken, mainstream. Chicken, tuna, steak. Yeah. Turkey. Eggs, Seafood. Man. Yeah, I egg, love eggs. egg whites. You know, those are all things that are going to help you out. I think it's just about just being accountable, you know, so you know what mm. your goal is. 2,000 calories, 2,700, and you're just working your way around that. Like yeah. you said, if you don't know, you're just driving. That's the thing. A map. Yeah, it's 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 hard to do it without tracking it, and tracking it is easier than it's ever been, because yeah. like even if you fuck up, bro, like you can you can just search Chipotle burrito exactly, and it'll ask or it'll list every type of burrito they have. You just touch it and it fills everything out. You yeah. can save like meals that you eat commonly. I mean, like, I, I don't think I've same, ever searched Chipotle I eat this, burrito. I eat the same thing for breakfast every single day. <laughs> so I just fucking wake up every morning. I and just, just put hit it the breakfast. In. Yeah, it's yeah, easy. Yeah, just put breakfast, you know? Yeah, it's made well, a difference. I'm going to delete easier. my McDonald's app. <laughs> don't they give, like, free stuff, like, for <laughs> points? Know, no. <laughs> points. You don't, bro, do you have a McDonald's app? No. I, they've told me it's a hard to, like, not delete it because they give you free stuff to just keep you it's on it. It's hard to delete it. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, oh, I want to delete it because I'm eating it too much. But if I delete it, I'll lose all the free shit making me eat more of it. <laughs> bro, I feel like marketing. That's, once you that's get marketing, marketing, man. Yeah, How old are you? you know? uh, 24. 24? Damn, bro. Wait till you like, you're like 40. You wake, you wake up one day and you're fat. Like, you just wake up and then... Like you just yeah. got fat? Like, I don't Overnight. Know. <laughs> For nah, real. I got, I got pictures of you like five, six years ago with me. You weren't 40 then. No, yeah. I'm, well, I'm saying like 30s, 40s. You just wake up and you're like fucking 22. fat, bro. You're like, what the hell happened? <laughs> no, what's it worse is when you run into somebody you don't see for a while and they say, what happened? <laughs> like, damn, what'd you wake up and you were fat? Yeah. Nah, but you know what I love about fitness is like, fitness. it's yeah. just discipline, you know? Like, it just translates anything else Everything. to your life. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You know? Or vice versa, too. It's like, you know, when discipline is such a key thing, man. Like, I, I read this book called Atomic Habits. And it's like discipline is something that it's not even like people you're born with it, you have it or you don't. You can just teach it to yourself, exactly. you know what I mean? Yeah. And just create little things that stack into bigger habits. And then once it's not a habit anymore, now it's just discipline. What is that book know? called? Atomic Habits? Atomic Habits, yeah. 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 I mean, it's a it's good like one. Most of the time, I don't feel like waking up and just going to the gym. It's like I sometimes I'm to. dreading just going there, you know? Well, that's, bro, that's why I, you know, like, you, you used to be wanting to be motivated all the time, but then yeah. you learn, like, motivation is shit, you know? Because motivation always goes away. It's always yeah. discipline. You know? Exactly. Like, you're not motivated to fucking brush your teeth every morning, but you have to. It's just right. something you have to do, you know what I mean? And I think when you look at, like, working out and your health, bro, like, what's crazy, bro, is how much I will just disregard, like, my health, right? Yeah. But then when you think about it, it's like, fucking, there's nothing that's more important in your entire life. It is. It's like, Literally, people will trade all of their money that they ever accumulate to live longer. Exactly. That's right. It's so wild, man. Yeah. That's right. Thank you. Just, you some of that? <laughs> Please. What, what do you want, this or? Yeah, whatever. Where Would you it? steal the Macallan, bro? Oh, it's gone. It like a My man, <laughs> he's swinging it in the background. <laughs> man, I thought we'd have something good. You didn't bring anything, bro. What's up, what's up with you, man? Yeah. Where now? You're welcome here. Tell me one. <laughs> like shit. <laughs> All this talk about fitness got him depressed, bro. Yeah, <laughs> Forced like, me to drink. Stop. <laughs> stop the fitness talk, man. You still good? Still yeah, good? I'm good. I'm good. So I'm that's good, discipline good, right good, there. Good. That's a yeah, first. That's, that's a first for us. I wish yeah, I had nobody? great first, fucking first discipline. Guess first guest we've ever had that, yeah, that didn't Listen, drink. Listen, it's not that I don't drink. I get that No, no, I don't say don't yeah. drink. No, no, I'm discipline. just saying. Yeah. No, it's like, 
I don't know. It's just like I feel like I don't need alcohol or just like to have a good time. A yeah. lot of times I'm going out with my boys, you know, like Caesar, James, all of them, other friends, and like I just don't feel like I need that. You know, I, I'm yeah. good enough where I'm at that I could be social, you know, wow. and I don't need to drink. But there's sometimes there's I've some never nights hated myself more than I do <laughs> right now, bro. That that I could go out there and and or I need a couple of drinks, but it's not like I just try to to just not need it, you know, to have a good time. Yeah, yeah, you absolutely. Know? I um I love drinking, <laughs> and um I think I. I would consider myself a functioning alcoholic. Yeah. I used to be, I think. I, I drink three times a week, I think pretty consistently. About two months ago, I took like a a month hiatus where I was only drinking one day a week, and that was cool. But I just like drinking. I don't know. <laughs> what would you consider someone that's in... Like you, an alcoholic. Like at what point do you? No, not. I'm just I not saying I, you. Like right, just like I in think, general. I think what would three make times a week is a lot. Well, somebody who's dependent. It's, is there an actual definition? Like, what is the actual definition? Maybe like, I am, like, or maybe I'm it, not an alcoholic. Just in general. Like, put, put it this way. Here's the thing. Like, oh, the past, like, uh, I just, I actually just went like 13 days without drinking, just because like I wasn't going anywhere. Like I was, I had this stupid fucking annoying little cold cough. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, yeah, hey, I'm stuck in the house, and it's never like I'm like, fuck, you know, I, I want to drink, I miss drinking. Yeah. I just like, dude, I don't know. I can go out and have fun without drinking, but it's kind of like, like I can cook. A steak with no seasoning, but it's gonna be a lot better if I put salt and pepper and butter on it. Eh. You know, like I'm gonna have fun, but if I'm drinking, I'm gonna have a little more fun. Okay. See, I was like the, I was actually the opposite. Well, no, I wasn't the opposite. I mean, I would go out and fucking have fun with the best and laughing all night, whatever. But there was also like a violent side to me that I, yeah, like I just didn't want to deal with anymore. Yeah, I could, I don't, I could never blame that on, or. I don't blame that on people. Like, I don't blame alcohol for. I think alcohol just brings that. Like, it's that's just who you are at that point. Yeah, of you course. were probably just in a point of your life where you're yeah. just more violent. You know, yeah. a- absolutely. Yeah. No, I like, mean, I, I still am, but the way to control that is, you know, not drinking. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it brings your emotional your emotion yeah, out a little more. Exactly. Yeah. So what does that? It's say? always like I don't know. Made a mockery of like I. A drink? All yeah, all the things that I never wanted to say or do, I always did when I was drunk. When drunk. Mm. Yeah, like it, you say things that I or I said things that I didn't necessarily want to say to people. Yeah. I did things that I didn't want to do. Yeah, I hurt a lot of people. Bro, why do you hurt still myself. drink? It sounds like you hate yourself uh, when you're drunk. No, I, it's not that I hate. <laughs> well, no, it's just it's a matter of uh, moderation. You know, there's balance. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, yeah, a, I, I feel like a lot of people, especially like I'm in, like my age, like young young twenties, drink to just be more social. You know? Yeah, it's bro, it's it's crazy how socially dependent our yeah, culture is on drinking, on man. And if somebody's like, "No, I'm good," it's almost like you get an awkward look. Yeah, I get or that a all question. the time. Yeah, like, man, is everything good? Like, like, bro, I honestly think it, like, when somebody tells me they don't drink at all, I'm like, that's a red flag. I don't know about this person. I don't trust them. Nah, I'm not saying I don't drink at all. No, like, no, I'm, 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 I'm just, a, like, and it's weird. I know yeah, that it's not yeah. right for me to feel that way, you but I really do. drink. If yeah, somebody yeah, tells yeah, me yeah, they don't exactly drink on occasions, you know, like right. next week is I'm my like, birthday. I'm, I'm definitely, yeah, I'm a definitely drink. You know, right. you feel me? I don't, um, I don't know when's the last time I actually went out to drink. Like consuming yeah. more than time. four drinks on any day or more than fourteen a week. A week. That's an alcoholic. Damn, four drinks in a day. I think that's standard. That's minimal. The fuck you do before lunch, bro. <laughs> More than fourteen a week. That's the def the the definition defined, bro. That's a lot of drinks a day, though. That is. That's I think What's that's that, four. Day? four? Yeah, I do that every day. That's a lot. It doesn't say. It says any day, bro. Any day. For any day. For a week. Oh, on any day. Yeah. So you I can mean, have four drinks a week. You'd be considered an alcoholic. I'm definitely so if you not do alcoholic. three, you're not. <laughs> three and a half. Three and a half. Three and you're and not half. alcoholic. Just cut it off at the half. You're good. I love those hard lines <laughs> because it's like it's such a great definition. You know what I mean? Because think about it. Like, it's if somebody if uh somebody drinks wine every day with dinner, are they an alcoholic? I would say so. I don't know. Are they dependent? Yeah. That's that's to me. Like it's it's dependent. weird. It's like if they do like if they if they had to stop, could they? And would it be difficult? Like for me, I probably drink mm-hmm. more than way more than the average person drinks week on a week. But when things come up and I have to stop, it's like, it's no biggie. You know what I mean? I don't miss it. I'm not just like, fuck, I need a drink. I just stop. But it's like. Here's why. I, here's where I think I have an issue is I don't ever drink just to have a drink. Like, I'm not like, if if I'm not willing to get drunk that day, I'm not even going to drink at all. You know what I mean? Like, I don't just want a beer or two right. just to like 
get a little tipsy. I either want to be drunk or sober. There's not like a middle ground. See, I got to the point where I just wanted to f feel good, like get a little buzz on, and that's it. I don't want to be like falling down drunk. I don't want to well, be yeah, hungover. I don't want to be falling down. Like, yeah, I don't want to be throwing up. I don't want to do any of that. Yeah, you know, like, you yeah, just yeah. feel like shit. Nobody wants to throw nah, up, nah. bro. <laughs> Let me be clear. When I say like drunk, I mean drunk. Well, like, I'll tell you what. Look, I, I throwing up is like a once every ten year thing. Yeah. I, I used to go to clubs and drink to the point where I'd just go into the bathroom, make myself vomit so I could drink some more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's crazy. Yeah, I actually got kicked out of fucking places <laughs> when I lived in Oklahoma. That's crazy. That's a problem. Yeah. <laughs> that is crazy. But just to give you an idea, so I started drinking in the in the back of a classroom when I was in seventh grade, right, in my reading class. We would yeah. fucking swig Mad Dog uh, 2020. Mad um, Dog 2020. Yeah, then then you find yourself cutting school because you're hanging out with the boys and yeah. going to the liquor store. We used to fucking pay crack addicts to go get liquor for us. Were you like 12, 13? No. Uh, well, how old are you? Grade, like 12, 13. 12, 13. Yeah. yeah. Um, you're and might, then, like, you're, from, you might be over shooting that. You're probably a little older. From from that point on. Well, fuck, you get money when you were 12. From that point <laughs> on, all the way to fucking... Graduating high school is just like just straight up binge drinking, bro. bro how, when I, how when I say, feel? bro, when I say paying crackheads to fucking go get yeah, us alcohol, that's like, like sometimes that's not, we would get yeah. robbed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, like, I was just gonna say, that you how do. good like, does it feel when they actually bring the booze back to you? Yeah, because that's that's common. Like you know what I'm saying? Like fucking where I grew up, like you, you pay a crackhead, go inside, get you some booze. Yeah, you sit outside, like yo, you just slide him like a little tip. I'll give you five bucks. Yeah, you know what yeah, I'm yeah. saying? Grab me a fucking six pack. I'll give you five bucks or whatever. But it's like you said, a lot of times they're just like, all right, they take the money and they're like, fuck you, what are you going to do about it? <laughs> Go tell the cops. <laughs> no, you fuck them up. I got, I, I got, I got robbed by two crackhead ladies. <laughs> fucking run, yeah. Damn. Took my money. Fucking, I'm like, where the fuck are they? I see them running down the street. I'm like, what are you going to do? Chase after a crackhead? <laughs> like, wow. like, you don't want to touch them. But this is, this is in Jersey. It's not here in, in Rhode, Rhode Island. Island. Yeah. yeah. Um, Everywhere is the same, though, bro. Wherever you go. You know what I mean? Because Pawtucket, Central Falls, probably. Maybe the Northeast. Yeah. Nah, bro. Like, I'm, you go to Oklahoma. I don't think they have like crackheads. All right, like, bro. You know Oklahoma, saying? like, all right, maybe <laughs> it's a little he's different. Like, he's like, you're in northern Nebraska. It's a little different. <laughs> yeah, you. No, talk. anywhere, anywhere <laughs> you're around like big cities. You know, like yeah. where it's yeah. urban. There's urban of areas. Course, yeah. Anywhere there's crackheads, I guess. So, <laughs> drinking my whole, all my my teenage year. I'm like literally hanging out in the street. Like probably twenty of us drinking. I mean, this is back in the forties days when you know. you I don't know, you're too young for that. But. 40s? No, yeah. he means 40 ounce beers. Oh. Yeah. Like, He's like, what? are you 90? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, the He's 40s, the fuck you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, and then actually, when I, when I went into the service, you know, from my teenage years, I went to the military. The military, you know this, they fucking like binge drink, binge drink. Like, yeah. they do not fuck There's around. There's nothing else to do. Bro, <laughs> it, it's like, if you're not working, you're fucking drinking and getting hammered. <laughs> Yeah. So then that was like so true. another five years of binge drinking. Then yeah. coming out of the service at like 23, 24, whatever, a good another 10 years was like more drinking. It, it wore on me. Yeah, yeah of course. That's I'm actually like only 22 years old. I had a rough life. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you look 70. You look 70, Josh. All right, so yo, let's pay, let's pay the bills real quick. Um, first, we're going to a quick thank to our, we got two sponsors now, baby. What did Jay say last week? He's like, let's fucking thank our sponsors for keeping us alive and kicking. <laughs> Here, I'm actually going to trade these off. I'm going to let Jay read one, and I'll read one. <clears throat> I'll go yes, first. Yes, sir. Big thank you to Cambio's Cuts. If you're looking for a barbershop that delivers exceptional haircuts with decades of combined experience, look no further than Cambio's Cuts located at 190 Putnam Pike in Johnston, uh, Rhode Island, obviously. And reachable at 401-580-6651. Cambio's Cuts provides all types of haircuts, beard services, from basic cuts to complex designs. You know, you need a little trim on top with some scissors. You need a fucking buzz cut, cut, beard cut, whatever you need. Their experienced barbers cut. take pride in their attention to detail, making sure every client client <laughs> leaves feeling on point. They listen to their clients' <laughs> needs, discuss any concerns, make recommendations based on hair type and style. Cambio's Cuts also has an easy online Cambio. booking system that makes scheduling quick and hassle-free. They've been exclusively serving clients here for over 10 years, and their commitment to providing the highest level of service is what sets them apart. So whether you're a new client or a regular, Cambio's Cuts <laughs> Barbershop 
He will make sure boundaries. experience is nothing short of exceptional. <laughs> so if you're ready, hold on. If you're ready for a haircut that will leave you feeling confident and on top of the world, book your appointment with Cameo's Cuts. What did I type something wrong? No, just like he <laughs> typed is like so scripted. Uh, <laughs> hey there, Rhode Island drivers. <laughs> <laughs> it's the J2 Podcasts. <laughs> Matter of body. <laughs> Uh, big shout out to uh, Division Street Auto Sales and Service, our man George. He's always been a big supporter of the J2 podcast. Thank you, George. Um, we're going to tell you about the best auto service in town. <laughs> Yo, you wrote this? Is this Chat GPT? <laughs> <laughs> Division Street Auto Sales and Service. If you're tired of dealing with the hassle of uncertainty, of finding a reliable mechanic, then you're going to love Division Street Auto Sales and Service. They're a local and family-owned business in Pawtucket with a reputation for honesty and trustworthiness that spans over a decade. No matter what type of vehicle you drive, they've got you covered. From cars to trucks to SUVs, their expert technicians have the knowledge and experience to tackle any job. Bro, I know you didn't type this shit. <laughs> Yo, keep reading, bro. Keep reading. Oh, and, unlike, and unlike some shops... They will try to upsell you on unnecessary services. Division Street Auto Sales and Services always puts your needs first. They give you an honest oh, assessment yeah, of what your, what your vehicle needs and what can wait so you can make informed decisions about your car's maintenance. What's more, but wait, there's more. Division Street stands behind their work. If you ever have any issues after repair, they'll make it right. No questions asked. That's the kind of peace of mind you can get from a shop that truly cares about their customers. That's nice. Thank you, man. Personally, yeah, you can tell this is very personal. <laughs> Personally, <laughs> I've been taking my vehicles to Division Street Auto Service for the past 10 years, and I wouldn't trust anyone else. Their friendly staff always makes me feel welcome, and they go above and beyond to make sure my car is running smoothly. Great job. I drive a Tesla. So if you're in need of auto service or a new ride, don't hesitate <laughs> to give them a call at 401-723-7080. Stop by 595 Division Street in Pawtucket, Rhode Island. You won't regret it. Ask for George. He is the man. All right, we're going to shorten that one a bit. I know. What the <laughs> fuck, man? You can give a speech. <laughs> the State of the Union address over there. Oh, my God. I didn't realize when I was writing it how long it was going to be. You did not write that. Of course I wrote it, bro. Who wrote it? Was it? Chad GPT. No, 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 no. So we don't say that on the air. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, so we're locking up sponsors, so that's cool. George is our guy, man. See, he snap answered, too. I sent him the picture. He's like, I'll take the biggest one you got. I was like, all right. I wish I had it higher priced right now. <laughs> Jay told us too. Jay Gocher was just like, bro, first thing I would do with these sponsor packages, quadruple the price. I'm like, what? He goes, and then hire somebody in India to spam every business owner with them. I was like, all right. Yeah, he's got it down. He's got it down. Jay, Jay's the man. You want to bring us into the next segment? Yeah. What is today, man? So I used to read these. Now that we got Brandon, though, Brandon's got a great voice. He's, uh, he's going to sing for us. <laughs> he's going to sing. He's going to sing? It's uh, <laughs> so right, right. uh, fucking Freddy was here. That was funny. Right, what is today? <coughs> oh, excuse me. So you actually just took um, type in uh, what holiday. Is Arab? What is Arab? <laughs> what is Arab? Why is that like the first you thing? Know, no, 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 you should no, no, no. see our searches, bro. bro. What the hell? Apparently, now we know Kevin doesn't watch the episodes. <laughs> hey, type, type in R E. No, um, <laughs> what is today? No, you want to search National Today Calendar. National Boyfriend Day. <laughs> <laughs> That's in your search entry, bro. <laughs> and Josh. <laughs> Down to is there a today? Let's go to February. 26th. There you go, baby. Find 26th. That's the 24th. We got to get the buns and bites grilled up. Right here. <laughs> shouldn't answer me, bro. You shouldn't answer me either. Oh, That's a good so one. Nice. Read them to us, baby. Way to end the month. Today is National Black Lives Matter Day. Today is National Carnival Day. You do have a nice voice. Carpe That's Diem Day. For what, hold on, hold on. Wait, don't, don't go through. Let's comment on these, first of all. Black Lives Matter Day. Isn't the whole month about black lives? Yeah, it's kind of fucked up. Yeah, they're double dipping. I'm not down with that. 
Uh, hey, I don't mind the whole day. Black Lives thing. A I, Black I, I Lives hope, Matter I day. Not, <laughs> a Black Lives Matter day. I don't fucking subscribe to that. <laughs> Fuck that. That was Jay O'Leary. That is Jay O'Leary. <laughs> <laughs> he said, "Fuck." Black Lives. As an organization. So, no, uh, no, no, hold on. <laughs> Don't say fuck Black Lives. I didn't say that. No. Yeah, the organization is a bit weird. Um, what does Carpe Diem mean? Like seize the day seize or the some day. shit? Yeah. yeah, seize the day. I feel like every day should be seize Carpe Diem. Yeah. I have that tattooed on my chest like an idiot. Seize the seize day? Seize the moment. Yeah, this one too. Look at that, bro. Time. You like that one? Okay, okay. It's National Saul Day. I'm gonna get the pledge. Saul? I'm gonna get the pledge tattooed on my back. Who the fuck Saul? <laughs> Wait, why'd you why'd you skip seven of them? You didn't read any of them, bro. <laughs> you told me to stop. Yeah. <laughs> so All we right. could comment. Um, Pete's sake. Pete's sake day. International Tongue Twister Contest <laughs> Day. I'd like to see that right now live. <laughs> for twister. Pete's sake, what is Pete's sake? That's like the white phrase. Ah, oh, yeah, for Pete's God sake. Kuwait Liberation Day. Oh wait, hold on. Kuwait Liberation Day. So obviously we liberated Kuwait during the Gulf War. Right, so when I was over there, them fuckers, we would drive by in the Hummers. Them fuckers, it would be those fuckers. Those fuckers, we would drive by in the Hummers, and they would spit on the ground. That's how they. Sh- wow. Even though we liberated them from Iraq, Iraq took them over. We liberated them, and we would drive by, and they would spit on the ground. It's like, not really that you, bad. You fucking fuck fuckers. It was a lot. Right, of, anyway, they could have been doing worse shit than that, bro. Ah, oh, just a little disrespect, you know. Like, fine, you want fucking Iraq to. Take over your country. They shot you. <laughs> go, go fuck yourselves. You're over there shooting them. They're just spitting back at you. Hey, Arabs don't like <laughs> Americans. Anyway, go ahead. All right. Um, tongue twister day? Tongue twister day. We'd like to see that right now. You got any cherry what's stems? A, what's a tongue? T- That's not what I thought it was. Seashell. Tongue twister, bro. <laughs> Sally sells seashells down by the <laughs> seashore. Yes. Oh, shit. Um, let it turn out it. Elder day. Levi Strauss Day. My girl works at Levi's and rent them. What's they Strauss? say that is that's that racist. Type, is that a type of pants? You see that picture jeans? right there? The Levi Strauss? They say that's like slaves and shit or Who something. Who says that? I don't know. It was like something that you gotta like look it up. I don't you know. love them. Like, oh, they do this. Like, who says it? Nobody. No, I've you never heard anybody say Levi's are racist. All right, let's look it up. Yeah, you gotta look up like Levi Strauss insignia or whatever racist. Racist Levi. I think it shows like <laughs> two horses Levi. pulling a black dude. Apart, Levi Ooh, that's a tough way to die. Getting pulled to death like that is See? the Levi's like a nice logo look at Oh, okay, first. maybe it's not. Maybe it's jeans. <laughs> oh wow, wow! It's just hitting a horse. I mean, no, that's a new logo. Anything, it used to be a black dude. If, I mean, <laughs> what is it showing? How strong the jeans are? I something guess. like that, but there was like some kind of racist something going on. I don't with, think this is racist. I think this is. Uh, he was him he, and Hannah back on. He was the first you guest them back ever. On? I don't know. Him I think Hannah. we're still too new to like start recycling yet. You know, it's I. I'd like to get some new people on too, but they were both great. <clears throat> That's what I'm saying. But he was the first guest that was ever like really concerned with how he was portrayed. You know, on it. But I, the conversation I had with him, I'm like, bro, that's not how you portray. That's like who you are. So the, that's what I said. the The concern that you have is not how you were portrayed here. The concern is like how fucking, you're portraying yourself. <laughs> yeah, like be yourself around motherfuckers, bro. Yeah. I mean, I kind of get it, you know what I mean? But I mean, if I like suck a dick, just say it. You say you never asked. Well, if you want to, just be okay with that. It's so weird. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, All right, so moving right along. if you're watching or listening, you might see a little bit of a glitch or hiccup in the video. It's because uh, our shit just had a technical difficulty, but we're good. That should be an easy fix. Oh, wow, we, we, oh you know what? Are we recording now again? Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> Just in case I have to sync up audio and video, I'll see that I clapped and I'll listen for the clap old school. That's what we used to do, bro. We used to record audio and video separately, and it was a pain in the dick. So, we're trying to get this buns and bites girl <coughs> on here. Yeah, what's up, bro? You got a verified account. Can you help us out here? You got a check mark? No. No? You got like 40 Are you kids. official? No. <laughs> get us Where did you even get that? Get us, get, us some, get us some Kevin Tay official. I think it actually you get paid us for it, right? Wait, get wait, us some pull, TikTok pull clout, bro. Pull get us some clout. Bikes. We're trying to get some uh, you know, some local celebs on here. Hey, there's another, actually, uh, another local podcast, these two chicks. Uh, I think it's, what is the fuck is it's it called? IG? I don't know what the fuck it's called. Not in bed, is it? Shout out real quick. We try to get them on here, too. Try. Let's talk. You're more Dewey. Yo, yeah, yeah, we had your IG up here too, bro. We just want you everywhere. You know what I mean? They're from Rhode Island, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's the only reason why we're not going to try to fly anybody out yet, bro. 
<laughs> we already had somebody that was willing to come on, but we needed really? to pay for that travel. I was like, I can't do that yet. What do we got to do, buns and bites, huh? to get you on here? What's her name? Laura? Uh, or something? <laughs> Stacy? I don't know what your name is. She looks like a buns Tabitha. And bites. I don't get it. Like I, I actually like her. Uh, I know they review, review so. food. Like what? Yeah. I, so I get the bites. So where are the buns? Oh look! They, oh, that's another podcast. That's local. Uh, Complex ambition. Yeah. yeah. What's that? Yeah. Let me see. I yeah. actually went to high school with them. They They're pretty to, big. Actually. They went to classical high school. They were Club Ambition podcast. Yeah. yeah. See, what do you think of those little mics? See those mic cubes? Those are like cheap and easy to get and make. Yeah. You can put those on the back lines. Stupid. I'm such a hater. <laughs> I'm like, they look stupid. She really did a good job branding she's herself, in, though. Yeah, she's in, well, I was going to say, she's in great shape for the way she just eats. Well, she just takes a bite, though, you know what I mean? Uh, a yeah, she doesn't yeah. eat all that shit. I guess, yeah, it's yeah, like the bar stool, dude. Everybody's like, yo, he eats pizza every day, but Portner's like taking three bites and that's yeah, it. That's, you know? that's true. Yeah, you're right. Is it just one or is it? Actually, to tell you the truth, I mean, unless she's going get to on, get on here and like, Talk some like real shit. Like, I don't really like you know. She's not going to add to the value of the conversation. Like, if she's That's not a conversation, so. like, we've never had anybody that doesn't talk real shit with us. No, no, I'm saying like, I, I don't, I, I don't want her on here and like we're just interviewing her. You know what I'm saying? That's not what we're we're, we're about. Like, Bro, real she's shit. not even answering us. Why are you like disqualifying her now? <laughs> she don't even answer our emails. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't like, want her. She I don't think she's going to come on and run shit here. Like, bro. She's not no, even no, looking no, at her email shit. I'm saying, like, if, you know, I, I can see somebody with a brand being concerned, like, oh, wait, they're a little too, you know. Like, I know I know what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're a little too edgy for, like, what I want my brand <clears throat> to be associated with, yeah. which I totally understand to some degree. Yeah, then she just wouldn't come on. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think she'd come on. But that, you know, <laughs> I, yeah. I, 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 don't, I don't think, think she'd come on. I would put, uh, <laughs> put money on it. Um, yeah. You put money on it? Yeah. How much, bro? A rack. I would say ten. Said, I would say right. ten racks. <laughs> that she's gonna come on here. I'd go ten racks. No, I don't think she would, because she's all about brand. That's how Jay was saying. You know, yeah. she has. Look how many followers she has. She, you know, her brand is basically that's her her business, her life. So, but the thing is, she, she did go on the other podcast, him. or she might you know? do it for eight racks, well, and I pocket too. <laughs> and if they, you know, here's the thing: if, if if a brand wants to go on like the safe shit, you know, go on like. She was on another podcast, actually. These other two chicks called, I don't know, Broads on, I don't know what the fuck it's called, Broads, Broads Podcast, something like that. Yeah, but do you know what the, the, the two podcasts she was on, do you know anything about those podcasts? They're, They're definitely, definitely not as edgy as us. <clears throat> Stop saying we're edgy. It sounds so corny. Well, that's, I don't know how to it's say so it. edgy. <laughs> yeah. What, what, what else is it? What other words should I, I would, use? I don't consider myself edgy, bro. That's so bro, weird. Bro, we got a we got a we got an episode called, titled "What Do Dicks Taste Like?" Maybe it's just a, <laughs> maybe, maybe it's just a gay podcast. It's, it's a gay not, podcast. It's not edgy. This bro. is definitely not a gay podcast. It's not edgy. What are you seventeen, bro? Edgy like you're wearing. How do you describe that when you're talking gay. about brands? <laughs> that shit was no, gay. No, no. What do dicks taste like? Was it was a gay episode? <laughs> I'm saying from a business standpoint, like to put like you know. Offensive, but what they, but, inappropriate. Yeah, well, I mean, that's subjective, but I can understand it to some degree. Um, however, I mean, it's real life shit. Like, we're just this, exactly if, if the mics weren't on and we weren't recording, this is how we, we, we would be talking. If she was in here or if <coughs> anybody was in here, oh, excuse me. this is how we talk. Yeah, we're this just so edgy. Fucking bro. bullshit. We don't give a fuck. Stop okay. using that word edgy, bro. <laughs> so edgy. Okay. <laughs> I'm with you, Kevin. Then Kevin's like, I bet she doesn't come on. Yeah. <laughs> I love that Jay's like, this bitch better not come on and thinking we're just going to ask her questions. Like, bro, she left us on red like six times. Oh, she left you guys on red? Yeah. I thought she just didn't even see the message. <laughs> well, maybe. I don't know. I don't know okay, who it was okay. on red. I'm just a She didn't respond to mine. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. I wrote her twice. That was probably, I think I should have just took the initiative. I just sent her an email with a picture of Kevin Topless, like, yo, you want to come on our podcast? <laughs> She'll say yes. <laughs> Probably, bro. I would. Oh, All right, can we remove this from the screen? This is getting a little weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go, naked. Oh, yeah, you didn't finish the list, guy. Uh... <clears throat> Where were we? National Pistachio? We're like, we're edgy. National Pistachio Day. <laughs> <laughs> 
National Saul Day, Orthodox What's Weekend Saul? Sunday. What's a Saul? What's a Saul? Saul? Why do you say Saul, bro? Saul. That's a kid in my class. His name is Saul. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, who the fuck is Saul? Um, I said a mad spam. Male given Hebrew name meaning prayed for. Oh, yeah, that's, so that's you a, might have pronounced it correctly. Saul. Hey. Saul sounds more Hebrew than Saul. Uh, give me a little fucking uh, <clears throat> history on Saul. So St. Paul's name before it was St. Paul was Saul. And he used to actually murder Christians. Yep. But anyway. And then he changed. Then that's he changed. What, that's what's up. Yep. Tell a fairy tale day, Thermos Bottle Day, Jewish Book Week, and Peace Corps Week. And Peace. That is national today. This week was kind of dry. Yeah. Wow. Not much going on. Yeah, you're going to watch this Jake Paul fight? No. No? No. It's all Who's rigged. he fighting? He's fighting Tyson Fury's brother, bro, Tommy Fury. You know what's crazy, right, is when people hear the Jake Paul fight, you get a lot of, oh, come on, this guy. But you know what? There's one undeniable thing that you can't really dispute is that this YouTuber is the biggest name in boxing right now. Facts. Yeah. How oh, yeah. wild is that, bro? It's like, I give him credit, bro. <laughs> you have to. How do you not? Bro? Yeah, of course. He's not just talking shit. He's actually in the ring. You know what I'm saying? Knocking motherfuckers out, bro. <laughs> no. what if it's, How cold, what if it's bro? Still, possibly. I'll still, I'll still give him props for it, you know, because it's all marketing and stuff. So all the way he's presenting himself, you know. Think Yo, about it. If hold you, on, hold, just. All right, so you if watch it's UFC, rigged, right? bro. Yeah, watch, bro. I'm an avid. Do you fuck okay. with UFC? So, I'm, so I'm Tyron Woodley, he gets paid what, like? 200, 300K per for fight. For his UFC, and then, if that, if that. All right, and then Jake Paul says, all right, here, I'm going to pay you $3 million. Just, just take a hit and get knocked out. I Yeah, I don't disagree with the theory. Like, it's possible. Yeah. The problem that I have, bro, is do you know, like, you have to convince millions of people that that shit is real. These aren't actors. You know what I mean? Like, these are athletes, bro, going in there. Like, I feel like, bro, like, professional stuntmen train for years to take a punch and make it look real and then get knocked out. Well, you could just be defenseless just take, and take yeah, a pen. Yeah, just take you don't a gotta, You don't got to act that, bro. What do you mean? You, you just, just, take, a, you just take a hit to the face. You yeah. get knocked out cold. I mean, we know that boxing has been rigged in its history. Yeah, we know that. Exactly. That's, like, a, yeah. a known fact. Yeah, but, but regardless these, these of the fact. These things get a lot more difficult to rig, though, with, the, with social media and how many people... Um, have access to like these these fighters and these people in their personal lives and shit. It's just so hard to rig something like that. I don't think it's rigged. You I think it's why? silly. I think it's rigged. In UFC, Tyrone Woodley never got knocked out like that, and he's gotten thrown bombs at him. Yo, but he's also. I mean, he's never really taken shots like that, bro. Yeah, he's in the he UFC. was always yeah, but he was always wrestling base. So like when the stand up was too dangerous, he could just safely take it. You to have the an ground. option. Yeah. Let's safely, safely ground and pound. <laughs> <laughs> he could gently take someone to the ground and elbow their face. I mean, nah, I, I, but he I think also, that's irrelevant to but he also, whether it is, yeah. you know, rigged or not. I mean, he's, that he's dude's been still stopped, going in the ring. Yeah. Like, like stopped, with shots to the wrist. He because you're still, like, going like this, you know? But, like, getting knocked out completely cold like that, that's the Yo, first Yo, but also, when you, when you box with a pure boxer, their punching power is going to be so much different than a mixed martial artist punch. Like, mm -hmm. think about it. If you're, you're devoting 100% of your... Your, your time and your resource to just punching only. You're obviously going to punch better than somebody that punches, kicks, wrestles, does grappling. Sure. You know, like, for the 40 hours they put in the gym doing all of those things, Jake Paul's putting that many hours only punching. Yeah. You know, so it's... Do you think it was rigged, that fight? He does. I, he think, I think just the whole thing is just rigged. You, know? you think sports is just rigged? No, nah, not... Oh, I mean, you could argue that, too. Yeah. You could very well Like, yo, this year's that. World Cup, you, could you couldn't write well. that. Absolutely. You couldn't write that, bro. Yeah. This year's World Cup was so wild, bro. You couldn't write that shit. Very well argue that sports in general is just rigged. I love the uh, the memes we talked about it before, bro. Like with the fucking does you you follow NFL or no? Not really. No, not that. So there's a retired running back who retired like in his prime like five years ago. His name is um fuck Arian Foster, mm -hmm. maybe. So he went on a podcast and he was talking about how this shit is scripted. You know, he was like, yeah, bro. Like, they would tell me, like, hey, here's the game plan for the week. This is how the game is going to go. Mm. But he was obviously doing it in parody. You know what I mean? Like, in jest, bro. And, like, a lot of people took what he said for real. And, bro, like, the memes that came out the next couple weeks, it was, like, a picture of Tom Brady celebrating. And the caption was, like, Tom Brady reading the script on his career. <laughs> it's like, fucking, <laughs> oh, my God. You know who RG3 is? 
He was the, he was going to be like the stud, you know, like the next great quarterback, but he got injured his first year and his career ended. So it showed him crying. It was like him reading week one script. <laughs> it's like, fuck him. I think it's because it people great. know that sports are rigged. Can be rigged. And Can it's like, yeah. it's like to what capacity? Yeah, so, like, yeah, when somebody yeah. comes out like that, and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, see, I told you, you know, that kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, right. You I don't get think like it's scripted to yeah, the point yeah, where, no, like, no, okay, no, hey, no. you're going to be get like the you, fucking super conspiracist <laughs> you're that think that's a like smoking this, gun. And you're going to catch yeah. it like this. But I mean, all you got to do is just pay off the refs. Exactly. You know, and yeah. just they'll make weird ass calls. Yeah. And fucking. But the thing is, is, bro, like, it's even that is so much more hard to do now because of the instant replay technology. The fact that things can be reviewed. Yeah, but consider sure this. Tech, you know what I mean? It's Even with instant replay, think of how many bad calls w- were blatantly clear and obvious. Like, that was a horrible call, but the call still went through. Uh, much less than three years ago. And sure. Much less than five years ago. Much less than, you know, ten years ago. I it's mean, it's only improved. There's it, still a human element there, bro, that you're watching something in real time. Oh, it, oh, it's blatantly how many obvious. Refs are on, on. on the field, let's say, let's in the NFL during Before the game. we move forward, but when you say it's blatantly obvious, yeah. your perspective is only that of a slow motion camera, like fucking 8K camera angle. You know, there's still a human element to a ref that's watching it from a different point of view in real time that's making that but call. But don't they you know have instant I mean? replay sure. and they look at it now, even yeah. in basketball? Yeah, but one of the rulings has always been like you can't overturn judgment calls like a referee's call you can overturn it like whether or not he stepped out of bounds but you can't overturn whether or not there was a penalty on the play well i'm not saying even perspective where the perspective reveals that it was a bad call i'm talking about like from almost any angle the crowd knows it like those kind of bad calls and it still moves the crowd knowing it is irrelevant bro because the crowd is 100 always here's my point the home team what they want to happen my point is that all you have to do is just, however many no, refs there are, is just I pay, just pay off is, the refs. Your point right? is that it's, it's in theory, it's possible to pay off a ref and rig a game, which I'm yeah. not disagreeing with you. Yeah. I think it's just a lot harder than people say, you know, think it is. Sure. Not impossible, though. No, nothing. I mean, not impossible is not. Because I, 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 can, I can recall, not obviously specific. It's not, impo- it's not impossible games. that it's I could recall true. a specific game if you want to pull it up in soccer. Like where it's yeah. just horrible calls. Like, t- like, even like you don't is, watch soccer, right? Soccer is more I, I likely to, to be rigged. All right. But there's a certain There's game. a lot more money in soccer, bro. Yeah. And there's a lot more you influence get killed in <laughs> countries that are not as fucking straight and arrow. You know what I mean? Can we pull up a video? Yeah, of course. Look up Barcelona versus Chelsea. should come up. 2009, I think it is. Oh, referee, referee. Just click on that. Whatever one it may be. Oh, yeah. It's like the ball went in the net. The ref was like, I didn't see it. I didn't see it. Yeah. yeah. Well, oh, it's like one a, of the biggest a, robbery. Uh, yeah, one of the biggest robberies. Is this when ever. it crosses the line? No, no, no. no you'll see. <coughs> this is the shit that I'm talking about. Yeah. Like, I think right here, he got paid big bucks. Like, so Barcelona was supposed to win, which is a yellow team. We don't need audio, right? Probably not, but. Some of those calls is like, whoa, bro. Nice helmet, dude. It's the same Look shit that. happens. He just, he just looks bald. Look at him. <laughs> he looks bald. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so they scored the goal. They went up 1-0. So, so pretty, Barcelona's a yellow. Looks yellow, pretty yeah, standard yeah, yeah, to yeah. me, though. All right, so right here, that's a penalty right there. He didn't call it right there. So he calls a foul, but it's clearly in the box. Let's take a look. Steps on his foot on the line. Yeah, right. Um, on the line, bro. All right, I guess that could be. What would this you? A, what would that's you on the line, bro. I, I first of all, hold on. I don't know. Pause I don't this know. real quick. Pause this. There's a problem. Right there, here. right there, right there. Look, he's it's in, in the, the box. He's no, no, in no, the no. box. The the foul was him stepping on his foot, right? That was the that was the initial. So what contact. would you call? The problem is, is one. I don't know the rule of. Is it a penalty that has to be fully in the box or is on the line a penalty? Okay. And what I mean by that is, in football, if the edge of the football crosses one the blade plane. of grass yeah. one blade of grass that's white like boop it's a touchdown okay i don't know if the entire thing that like for like in soccer 50, 50, yeah. the ball has to be all the way out of bounds yeah, before yeah. it's out of bounds exactly. you know so i don't know what the ruling that is there a, but there, there's more you'll see right now that'll yeah. come up so that was the first one so they should have been up i just debunked kevin's whole conspiracy no nah, no nah, watch because some of these life. are watch this one right here that's a clear right there that's another and well, i'm he's a definitely he's in the box he's there holding him sure. look he's look Bro, that's, that's I don't know. Little... Look, look, your whole the t-shirt. That's a you can foul. see the t-shirt. Pull, yeah, I know, I know that he has a hold of his t-shirt, or his jersey. But pause it real quick. There's a difference between if I have your shirt like this, 
and I pull your shirt and it affects your movement. Well, it did because you're gonna about to did score. It? But it didn't. It didn't look like his his body reacted in any way to having the shirt held. Mm, I don't know. Well, it's always going to. Right? Not really. Like, let me see. Put put your arm to me. Reach out. Reach this way. I'm gonna what? show you. <laughs> I'm gonna make me. a point. <laughs> look that way. Just tell me when or when I'm not holding your shirt, your jacket. Oh, right, but hold on. Before you do this, is this is this representative of what he did? Yeah. You you said you, it's always going to affect it. Like if I. Grab well, your shirt. Okay, you try to like oh, prove a point. Him. That's <laughs> all I'm trying oh, to do. Trying to, we're we talking about putting pulling put it no, in context we're, when we're. That's yeah. what the context is, is. I don't think the jersey. Yeah, but he's not doing what you're doing. The jersey being held affected the runner in any way. I think it did, but. Yeah. yeah. Run that shit back. Like, think you know, about no, it. You're, nothing you're, happens. Your shoulder, nothing you're, happens. You're trying to score. No, it was yeah, no, I agree with you. You're trying to score, and if you're getting like pulled, then it's going to affect your momentum. I don't think he was being pulled. I think his shirt was grabbed. But it didn't. You're probably right, bro. Like, if it affects his momentum, I would say 100 percent right penalty. Like, and he trips him too. Like, I just see the shirt being pulled having no effect on the other player. Nah, I think if you're going straight to goal, then it'll affect you. <laughs> For, oh, we, oh yeah, right there. <laughs> now the next one that they play over is crazy. There's one yeah. where it's like a clear. He's right in front, like a handball. So first one questionable. Second one with the jersey pull, I probably lean more towards you. Yeah. Like, just because most likely it's affecting him. That he's gonna. I don't score. know if I'm. I don't know if I'm the ref of him calling a penalty though, because I don't know if it had enough. All right. So right here. And that one's. There's one that should be coming up. I didn't see what happened. Yeah. I, I just saw him fall. They were heated. Oh, right here. Look, that's so obvious. You saw that? Did you see that? I can't because look, look, watch, 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 watch right now. Camera watch right now. quality is so shit. Did you see that? The handball? That's so obvious. Look. Oh, that's a handball in the that's, box. Like, like, no, you don't have to be a ref. And then right after that, they scored. Yeah, that that's a handball <laughs> in the box. Yeah, that's but a what penalty. is what is the what is the gray area with handballs? There's no gray area. He's like this. No, no, no. There is because the if, ball if can, the so ball can hit your hand if it's in a natural motion. Yeah. Yeah, but that's not a natural. That, the problem, the, <laughs> the problem with the rule though is that anytime you leave a rule open to interpretation, it's like you can't. It's hard to like tell the but referee. That's not a natural state like this. Like this is like here if, if you're, you're defending. You know, if you're well, this this when you're running and moving is more no, look, natural look than behind your back. He, look, I don't disagree with you. So, I'm just saying that that's a problem when you fucking have like a, a gray area in a rule. Well, it can you, always be lean. Would you call that? Probably. Yeah, I'm probably look, calling that. Look at that. that. Yeah, he went like this. That wasn't was, even natural running. Who runs not, like this? Yeah, who runs like that? <laughs> Gay ass. <laughs> <laughs> look, right after that, they score, and then because of that goal, they lost. And then I think there's one other penalty when he didn't, he didn't give up, like right after that, which was crazy. Well, I was a Barcelona fan, so I was celebrating. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, fuck it. <laughs> like, we winning. Right here, this one. You seen that? And he okay. runs to the ref after that. That's a clear handball. Right See, bro, he's actually turning away still, to I, not look, hit look, that. He's like, yo, bro. <laughs> yo, I, <laughs> he's like, bro, what you doing? <laughs> bro, I saw, I saw a woman's soccer team the other day chase and beat up a ref because of some non-call. Can you pull that clip, dude? Like, woman's team chases ref. This was wild, bro. Uh, my first thought was like, yo, they have to start letting these refs arm themselves. Yeah. Like, I you mean, need a gun, yeah. bro. You get fucked around <laughs> and killed, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that one should be fun. Look at this, bro. There you go. Play all the ads. <laughs> Just skip to the good part. Uh, Brand. Oh, we got oh, somebody a, talking uh, about it, bro. Uh, yeah. No, get me the real video. Fuck this guy. No, it's, not, it's probably gonna be something similar. Look at him chasing this <laughs> motherfucker, bro. <laughs> trying to hit him, <laughs> bro. Why? <laughs> That's what they do. Yo, those refs. Yo. <laughs> Yo, they got him right there. What is that? What the fuck is that, bro? Yo, should have made that call. <laughs> nah, that's, that's wild. crazy, bro. Kicked and shit. 
<laughs> nah, bro. Even like I be playing in like in, like leagues, like Spanish leagues, they be doing the same thing. They be just be chasing the refs. <laughs> like, yo, you <laughs> should have made that call. This, I'm this like, is a women's like, team, bro. That's fucking, fucking great. No, but it's like, bro, we're just playing like we're not even pros. You're like and playing wreck pickup. Yeah, we're just works. playing pickup and you're just <laughs> trying to end someone's life because of a call. You guys ever seen Green Street Hooligans? Nah. With Elijah Wood, hit from Lord of the Rings. Uh, nah, it's not. Yeah. Over I feel like I might have seen that, bro. Like people beating each other up, killing each other after the soccer game. And shit. Are they like going traveling on a bus and shit in that movie? Yeah, One of those right. double decker buses now. Well, we so we like know it. that sports are rigged, right? Mm-hmm. And that's that's what it comes down to with that guy coming out. What guy Talk, coming out? Talking about scripts and shit. And that's why everybody yeah. jumped on it. It's fucking. I don't think yeah, I mean, there, there's, there's definitely no it's, it's possible to you know it's possible to rig sports game, but if I had to put a number on it, I'd say ninety probably ninety nine percent of all the sports we watch. Are not rigged, you know, and then maybe big games where fucking Vegas is one way or the other, super yeah. heavily. Yeah. That makes sense. I think Don't playoff make, you know, games are a little bit more. I don't even know if it's specifically playoffs in general. It could just be where the fucking most money is at stake, yeah. right. and they can't afford to be a loss. Well, that's playoff games. It that's could be, bro. Stages, it, I mean, it could be that, bro. It could be the Super Bowl. That's you know, a, it could. Be, it could just be like two. A game like that, like you know, like we're two well, fucking big money teams. Yeah, yeah, that's two yeah. big money teams, you know. So what's his face taking that punch from? Uh, <clears throat> yeah, but thing you got. So you're so if you're thinking the Jake Paul thing is you're talking. Um, that was a big hit. Yeah, that's bro, a I, solid hit. But also, take. he's not he's knocked out fucking like five of his opponents. You think they're all taking that same dive? Listen, man. Well, so. I think, it, and then why? I'm why has Tyron Woodley not get knocked out the first fight? You know what I mean? To like, build it up, to build up a second fight, right? For money, more money. But he only got the second fight because a fighter pulled out last minute. You think you don't think that? You think that was rigged? built up? Yeah, to- bro. Listen, it's all like it's building up. Well, know? here's the thing. So, like, when there's an up and coming fighter. It's been known in the past. I'm talking about like you go back 20 years now. Well, what they usually where do they would is just they put a dog in the ring with that person to build his record up. That's to different build than him this, up. though. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. well, what I'm saying is like to build him up to like all these <laughs> high profile fights. Yeah. Well, that's what they do. They it's called padding their record. You know. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, now yeah. you have somebody that's 20 and 0, but they've only fought people that have never won. You know what I mean? They've Probably only fought bums. Well, a lot of people say that who Jake Paul has fought like really. Well, really? he hasn't fought any professional boxers. This is the first. Right. This is the first That's professional him boxer. Up. That's yeah. building him up. Yeah, yeah, putting him in there with. Let me be clear though. Putting him in there with people that suck is different <clears throat> than them taking dives. You know what I mean? Yeah, like the, it could be both. It could be. both. It could be both, but they're not the same thing. You like know if what I mean? Jake Paul hit you up, say, "Yo, this <clears throat> shit's not coming out. Okay. Pay you two million. You know, let's just make a. Let's just. Bro, whether or not I would do it is doesn't. Fucking prove your point though. <laughs> like, of course I that's would. That's what I'm saying. It. If you put yourself on their shoes and then yeah, yeah, I'm not saying there's not a chance. I just think it's unlikely. That's all. I think it's hard to. It make. makes great entertainment in TV, especially for a white guy to come and start knocking out fucking a black dude. Like that's that makes good TV. <laughs> What? No? <laughs> Can you find the womp womp what? fucking what? <laughs> like effect? Here? Like, let me ask. What kind of TV you watched growing up, bro? I'm saying Roots. <laughs> like, what the isn't fuck that isn't that more controversial in today's times? Right for to have this YouTuber fucking white guy, this Yo. wealthy, high profile white guy. You know what you actually did. Well, you and just made me realize. Can I just finish what I'm saying yeah, real yeah, fast? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, this is to so go into the ring, right? To what you're saying. And then to knock out a known fighter, a black dude, right? That's controversial. That that creates buzz. That creates like people are automatically gonna not. I shouldn't say automatically, but a, a huge population gonna be like, oh, this shit's fucking rigged. There's no way that shit's happening. That's what I'm. I saying. don't think because he's white. So I think cause when he... when is Jake Paul's first fight? Because the what I actually like about Jake Paul and what I like about I don't know. It's almost like refreshing until you just said that to me because I think for the first. Since Refreshing for a fight. white guy to knock out a black guy? <laughs> Your words, not mine. No, <laughs> is that what you're saying? saying? Is that today? No, yeah, that's today. What time? Um, he probably fights around five. Okay. When was his like? His, yeah, fight? his first boxing fight, because th- today, right? And he's he's been boxing now for what four years? Yeah. Boy. You guys are like you're terrible. You're terrible. All right, so 2018, right? Five years ago. And I can honestly wholeheartedly say, bro, 
that th- just now was the first time that I've ever oh, heard anything <laughs> about race regarding Jake Paul boxing. That you haven't but, heard? No, it was the first time I've ever heard it. <clears throat> well, yeah. That's, like, I've never even heard somebody mention that he's knocking out black guys. That's how weird. intelligent I am. It's See? More, you, it no, could be that. I think, I think you just like, wanted to be there. <laughs> Why do I want to be there? I don't gain anything. He's a YouTuber. That's the main focus. A YouTuber knocking out professional MMA fighters. And what adds to that is the whole fucking, he's white, knocking out a black dude. I would disagree with (laughs) that. Yeah, I don't think I've ever I just don't think that's there. (laughs) I know that. Hold on. I think that there's a, this is why people believe that, it's hard to believe that Jake Paul could knock out this dude because he's white and he's a YouTuber and blah, 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 blah. And they look well, at it, but like, he's a YouTuber knocking out athletes. That yeah, that I, is what I think people yeah, are hyped up about. Yeah. You don't think that the white black thing adds nah, add to it at all? Nah, I don't think so. Nah. Okay, I think there are times you where guys are like what? No, nah, because there are, there are times when that narrative is pushed. Yeah. I think you just kind of pick the one that was refreshingly never that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, yeah, possibly. Yeah. Yeah, he's especially Jake Paul. He's like super woke too. You know what I mean? Like he's not a. You, you think know, he's just out here, like, singling out black guys to knock out? No, I don't think he is. I'm talking about the people that are pulling the strings. You know, look, this what is what we're going to do. Is if he finally loses this fight, all the racist white people are like, yeah, he can't beat a real white guy because his opponent is white this week, today. I, from a from a, an entertainment point of view, I could totally see executives being like, this is what we're going to do. This is how it's going to be. You're saying it's rigged. We're going to have this white YouTuber guy come out here, fucking fuck up this black dude. And then, you know, it makes good TV. No. Like, nah, that's, that's not it. That's not it. That's not it, bro. That's not it, bro. That's, not it, bro. <laughs> that's a reach. <laughs> that's a reach. That's a far reach. <laughs> Can you take, explain why yeah. is it a far reach? Uh, it's, bro, I don't know, man. It's it, Even if it's not a reach, like I said, with because there is. There's a lot of racial divide, and that narrative is always pushed to us in everything, you know, in all the media we consume. Hey, you want some more? Yeah, yeah. Um, but you just, like I said, you made me realize that for all of the coverage that Jake Paul gets in all of his fights, it just made me realize how refreshing it was that that was never talked about. Like, there was never no woke mob coming and say, well, why is he knocking out black guys and not white? You know what I mean? Like, it's never been a thing. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay. I'm glad you brought it up because it made me realize that, but I hope nobody clings to what you just said. We're probably going to cut that out. I don't even want to put that idea in people's heads. (laughs) What? (laughs) That his opponents are black. His opponent was black. <laughs> you know, but it's funny because the more I think about it, I'm thinking, oh, Nate Robinson, Tyron Woodley, oh, yeah, Anderson yeah. Silva, they are all black guys. People don't like white, no, white but people ben, going ben in the Aspen, ring and, and other fucking two, the other minorities up, yeah, I just thought they're athletes. You know? That's what I mean. I don't yeah. think it was... A, like, a lot of times that is, you know, the focus. Yeah. yeah. Like, when, you know, like, cop killings and shit like that, It's that's always brought up in the narrative. Um, but this time it wasn't, yeah. The fact that they were professional... Like, but listen... At the end of the day, you can't. The kid is a professional athlete. He was an athlete his whole life. You know what I mean? Yeah. But you got to remember too, like his his five years of training and boxing at this point, yeah, is not the same as anybody else's five years. Yeah. Because he started training as a multi hundred millionaire person. Yeah. So he what can, number was that? Multi multi hundredaire millions. <laughs> Trillionaire, so you know what I mean. He's getting better training than the average boxer got yeah, for their yeah, first yeah. five years. He's getting more of it because he doesn't have to go to work like the average boxer did. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? He's probably getting more of it too with better equipment, better technology. Just everything about it is exponentially better yeah, than the average person. Sure. I'm saying, as it, uh, you know, like if I were to put on a show, let's say it's a show, right? It's all entertainment, right? I would set that up. I would set it exactly the way that it's for controversy. Not controversial, just, well, y- yes. Yeah, because that's what you want. I don't want that to be the main. <laughs> I don't want, like, I want to fight Tyron Woodley in Africa. <laughs> I, I don't Rumble want, in the jungle. I, I don't want that to, nah. to be the main point. I want that to be just, a, you know, an element of entertainment. Yeah. Right? It's not any point, bro. I don't, I, don't think, I don't think the country needs any added help yeah. to fucking pin whites versus blacks, bro, to be honest with you. I'm talking about race. I, you're not Spanish? I'm Filipino. You know, you look like uh, one of my, uh, like, just like a. <laughs> one of my <laughs> landscapers? I was going to say, no. my, like, he's no. like, yo, you, you look, look like you my fat cousin. As, like, uh, <laughs> like my, my uncle. Like, it just, you look Spanish. Yeah, I've been hearing you that get my that whole a lot. life. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Cholo. L- legit, like, my whole teenage years, I, I hung out with all Uruguayan, Puerto Rican, Dominican. Yeah. Um, so, depends on who I'm hanging out with. That's. 
like him being Colombian, you being Hispanic. What kind of Hispanic are you? Guatemalan. Guatemalan. Ooh, Guatemalan. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. when I, I never first... People would just know automatically that. Yeah, think yeah, that I'm yeah, Spanish. I, when I first hanging said, out I thought you were Asian, bro. Do you ever I get, get that, that a lot? You must yeah, get that a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought that, bro. I was like, oh, shit, he's Guatemalan. How does he... Sp-? They, Kat, <laughs> you mean Chris, he's Asian? Yeah, Chris was like, oh, yeah, he's he's uh, he does well with the Spanish speakers. I'm like, how the fuck you know Spanish, bro? Like, <laughs> he learned Spanish. <laughs> oh, right, he was Asian? <laughs> yeah, bro. Yeah. Really? I got twinky eyes. Yeah, me too. <laughs> well, it's that, you know what I mean? Like, a fucking, like, um, fair skin and really, really dark, straight hair. Like, that's yeah, a pretty that's common Asian. But he could pass for Asian. He is. I know. He's Arab Asian. <laughs> Black Arab. Should we address like who he is or just leave it? Oh yeah, no, we definitely should. We didn't even This is Brandon's first week here, actually. He just let's turn the camera around. Oh, it's his first week. Okay. Yeah, yeah. He um yeah, he just stepped into the role. The gentleman that was here before him stepped out. Okay. Taking a leave of absence. Okay, okay. There's really nothing to talk about, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I'm excited to watch this. I mean, put it this way. What's crazy about the dude he's fighting? So the dude he's fighting, you know who Tyson Fury is? Of course. You sure? Okay. So the dude, <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't know if I believe you or not. Um, the dude Bro, that Jake I know is, everything. I'm the man of all knowledge. So you don't right, know who he is. <laughs> who is he? Hey, look him up. <laughs> so Tyson Fury, right, is the best heavyweight boxer in the world. Yeah. Um, he's not even in good shape, too. Well, that's what makes, that's a fucking fun narrative. Is he comes in, can you look up Deontay Wilder? Because that's the guy that he's just knocked out twice to settle, like, all oh, argument, the, bro. I got the dad body. So he comes yeah, up there. He's fucking mean, This is the though, dude he bro. just crushed twice, bro. That dude looks like the fucking juggernaut. <laughs> like how in shape <laughs> fucking... Yo, yeah, that's crazy. here's what's crazy about Tyson Fury. So he won. He got the belt back, right, like two or three years ago. Mm. Before that, he was addicted to drugs and living in his car and well over 350 pounds. Bro, they're well, like, yo, crazy. we're trying to give you a title fight. And he's like, all right, I'll get back in shape. Six months later, he he doesn't look jacked, but he steps on the scale like that, bro, and he just can't be stopped, bro. He just beats everyone. You ever seen him fight? Like, did you ever watch his highlights yeah, yeah, or whatever? How, how fast he is? Bro, hey, can you pull up his speed? Like his He's an amazing his, boxer. Yeah, his uh like dodging punches. I don't know how what you look it up. Dante's? I, uh no, no um, Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury, like was dodging crazy, punches. Bro, I don't know. In their first fight. But Tyson uh, In their first fight, I he liked. gets dropped. And you would think immediately that he's done. Like, he's knocked out. He's not getting up. Like, and then the ref is counting, bro. Hold on. <clears throat> the ref is counting. And he's, like, not moving, bro. He's just sitting there, eyes closed. And then he just sits straight up like The Undertaker. Like, you would have thought it was a fucking movie. Dude. It made no sense. Like, yeah. This dude is, like, look at him. Mm. Bro, he's just, that's just mm. boxing. Look at him mm. dodging punches. Like, that's the difference, bro, between a boxer and their hands in defense between like an MMA fighter. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah, he's just he's, he's like a big ass dude <laughs> fucking fast pull up, as fuck. Can you, Brandon, can you pull up the video of just if you put Tyson Fury Undertaker, it'll probably show you exactly Undertaker. what I mean. Look, it's first one. Oh, when he got up. Yeah, I think I remember that. It was on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, look at this, bro. Look he's at out. This, look at this. He's unconscious right now. Dun, Ref is counting dun, right from the This hips. guy's dancing, blowing kisses right from the Didn't hips. Didn't he beat him? Right? Yeah. Just like straight out. No, of, so they fought three times. Out of this is the movie. first one. Look at this shit. Why do they gotta do this? Stupid they're, they're probably just gonna bro. like when he actually gets up. Fucking idiots. <laughs> like at WWE, they gotta play the music. I hate people, dude. Just leave the fucking clip alone. <laughs> and then it's showing. <laughs> Brandon, of all, uh, the, all, all the ones to show you, show us that one. Uh, that one, I think. Uh, yeah, that one. No, you skipped no, it. You skipped go it. up a little bit. Right there. That one, yeah, a little. Is that a short? Yeah, a short yeah. one. Short one short. Boop. Come on. Yeah, so they're fir- they fought three times. Their first fight, th- which is this fight right here, was a draw. <laughs> <laughs> He's, just like, it- He's like, "Fuck this, I'm getting up." So this fight was a draw, and everybody thought it was rigged because they thought Tyson actually won. Um, and then the next two fights, he stopped. He stopped Deontay. Yeah. Now, so the kid Jake Paul is fighting today. Is his brother? Is his, his brother? His little brother is that girl? <laughs> but everybody. <laughs> Lily breaks silence. But uh, yeah. <laughs> That's that girl from AT and T. She's hot as fuck though. She got curves. Melons, bro. She's she's. You say curves? Yeah, bro. Mm-hmm. We call them tits. And who the fuck um, is that? On the right. That guy. That's yeah. my uh, audition on American Idol. <laughs> Can we play that? 
same. Well, you can't hear <laughs> it anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Judge is crying. Yeah, yeah. The judge is crying. Yeah. Oh, right. Well, he, they cry because of that story, too. I, I don't, yo, I don't like when they go into those shows to try to sing and they give you the sobby backstory. S- yes, I hate it, too. It's so like. You're like, I'm here today produced. because it was my parents' goal for me to be a singer and they died saving kids and kittens out of trees yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. So I really hope I make it through. And you're like, all right, bro. Now we have to tell you you suck after telling us that. <laughs> but yeah, so he's fighting Tommy Fury, which is that dude's brother. But Tommy Fury is the kind of guy you were talking about earlier, bro. Is he a good fighter? No. I don't know who Tommy That's Fury is. That's the thing. is like he's undefeated, but his record is full of people that aren't He's any a professional good, you know boxer? I mean? He's a professional boxer with a padded record. But here's the thing. For their brands, both of them is almost like if either of them lose today... Their career is kind of washed. Draw, because it's like Jake Paul. If you lose, the, Jake Paul's whole mystique is he's not losing. You know what I mean? He keeps winning. <clears throat> the second he loses, it's kind of like everybody's like, "See, I told you so." He he right. fought a professional boxer, and he's not a real boxer. He yep. got beat, and you can't start over after that with what he's done. I think at this point, point. Um, and if Tommy Fury loses, is bro, your brother is Tyson Fury, and you got beat up by a YouTuber. Like, you're not a boxer. Get the yeah, fuck out of here. Yeah, you're fucked. Boxer. So yeah. neither one of them can afford to lose here. I call a prediction a draw. That's what I think is going to happen. I hope me. not, because I put a whole lot of money on Jake Paul. Dang. I actually love the underdog story, so I want the I want the YouTuber to beat the fuck out of everybody. He's the favorite. Oh, is he? He's the favorite? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's yeah, a heavy. Yeah. Not heavy, but... No, I'm saying just in favorite. general, like, whether he's fighting Tommy or whoever, like, just as he goes, I want him to kick the shit See, out the of thing him. is, bro, is since his first fight, everybody he fights is, like, the actual underdog. Yeah. Because there's two mm-hmm. things. One is he's the betting favorite, and two, there's a big conspiracy that is rigged and he's just set up to win anyway. Yeah. Mm. You know? So, <clears throat> trust me, I lost money betting against him in every one of his fights. <laughs> really? <laughs> no, that's why you're... Voting for him. I'm going to bet on him the one time he actually draws. Loses and draws, <laughs> yeah. The nice thing is, if it's a draw, I don't lose, just a push. Yeah. Sports. But, <clears throat> oh, I'm going to fucking Sports. suck something. Get this down. Whoa. Anywho, um, I don't know. You got anything else you want to chat about, bro? Seems like we've kind of tackled a bunch here. No, I'm not sure about you? anything else. I'll, I'll sit here all fucking day and sh- this is it, chop man. it we up, don't, We don't really plan shit, bro. We just kind of bullshit. Go with the flow. We just go with the flow. Yeah. We've seen your abs. <laughs> We've talked about Jake Paul. We've had a technical issue. There's got to be yeah. something that you want to say to the fucking out there. Uh, Let me put him on the spot like that. Yeah, bro. Damn, bro. Why you put me on the spot like that. <laughs> Nah, I mean, you guys saw my abs already. I think we're you good. You guys saw my abs already? We're good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, uh, man. Kevin's got plenty of accolades, bro. You're such a humble dude, actually. I like that a lot, man. Yeah. Like, I met you, bro. I was like, I've never heard you talk about fucking being the number one closer, having 40,000 followers and shit. Just beast, bro. Yeah, you just got to be humble in life, you know? You don't want to come out across. I meet a lot of cocky, cocky people. You know, and it's yeah. like I don't, I don't like the way they perceive themselves. So it's like I work, I'd rather with, I work with one. <laughs> stay humble, you know, and then just let your accolades do the talking, and just let your work do the talking. You know, yeah, that's Less, it. Let that's your it. let the results do the talking. Yeah, that's what that's I right. do. You know, just let the results do the talk. I don't need to talk it. You know, I walk. You don't need to talk yourself up. No, bro. No. I like that. You do. I mean, I feel like I come you from listening? very, very humble beginnings too. So yeah. it's like. Parents came here uh, to give me a better life. You know, you're first in, generation. Yeah, me too. So I was born in Guatemala. Well, like first and a half. I don't know how you would consider it's that. Kind of the same thing. My father was born in Colombia, floated here. Yeah. My mother was born here. So yeah, I mean, no, I, my both my parents were born in Guatemala, mm. and I'm then, first generation also. It's the same as well. Yeah, it's not a competition. <laughs> <laughs> what? No, I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, so I was like the first. Oh, that's kind of funny, know? bro. Look at that. All of our. Where was your dad born? Ireland? Ireland. My mom was born in the Philippines, yeah. Yeah, they were both born in Guatemala. What a match. Yeah. Irish and Filipino. Yeah. yeah, it's kind of fucked up when you think about it. Like two oh, complete different up. cultures. I feel like there's a lot of, you know, you take pride in being first generation, you know, because you want to give your your parents like a result of why yeah, you wanna, they you want to to give you a better life. What's the word I'm looking for? You want to kind of like legitimize their dream, you know? Like exactly, yeah, because that's what they did. You know, they came to give us a better life. I so. always said it, man. I give mad props to my parents because, like, it's hard to make it, just make it, right? Just yeah, when you're born general. in America, just make it, whatever, just in general. But to go to another country, meet somebody that's from another country, 
and you know you don't have you don't have like guidance. Yeah, you just kind of fucking you learn as you go. You learn the hard way. Yep. And they raise the family of four, and like yep. that'll I, like I have one one child, right? So, and I and I feel like man, I can't imagine four if I was in another yeah. country with four fucking kids. Yeah. Like damn. And they all had them when they were like you know young, like mm. s- like eighteen, nineteen. Yeah. You know. Like, it's did your like, parents speak English coming over? My dad learned, like, it took him a year. My mom took a little bit longer. But, yeah, they were, like, 2021, 20, they first got to America. And then they hmm. just had to learn a brand new language, a new location. That's absurd. You have brothers and sisters? I have two sisters. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. What do they do? The, one's at a URI right now. She's studying nice. biology. Um, and then the other one, she's still 14, so she's going to go to high school next year. You're the year. oldest. Yeah. What are you? Yeah. Setting a good example, bro. I'm trying to, you know. Um, the house thing is all official. Remember the last I mean a couple yeah, of years ago. Yeah, should saying. be closing uh, either the second or third. First oh. person in your family to own a home. Own a home. Yeah, that's what's up. Yeah, bro, trying to create generational wealth. You know, it'd kind of yeah. be a disrespect if they got here and I didn't do nothing with my life. You know, so I said immigrant mentality, bro. Yeah, in yeah. a good way. In a good way. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I don't like if someone calls me an immigrant. I am an immigrant. You know. But, well, you're not right. Were you well, born I mean, I was born were in Guatemala. So oh, you were born. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. So yeah. you're not even you're first, not even generation, first generation. Your kids, your will, kids be. will be. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, I. Oh, s- bro, that's. I mean, I was born in Guatemala. I came here when I was three years old. You but know, still. this is my whole life. Right. I've been here, but. You know, I can't tell you. All I remember growing up in the streets of Guatemala because. <laughs> yeah, no. Sure. I grew up in Providence. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Ah, uh, the old playpen days back <laughs> in Guatemala. <laughs> that's it, though. No, so no, that's yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's why I get, yeah, so when you said come here to give you a better life, that wasn't really clicking to me almost because. No, I was born in You don't know, like, if you come here without kids, you don't know if you're having kids to give them a better life. Like, you're just coming here to give yourself a better life. But, yeah, your parents came here legit. Like, yo, we have a kid. Let's do this. Yeah. Yeah, bro. It's amazing, bro, how there are very few countries that people flee to for the chance at a better life. But America is and always has been one of those. Even even with all of the shittiness that's happening today or how many people will fucking sit here and curse America, it is still the go of countries. It is. Yeah, there's probably there's not another country out there you'd be like, I'd rather go there than than America. No. And you said it's really hard to make it, bro. I kinda disagree. No, I think there's other countries. I think it's really easy to make it in America. Yeah, here I think there's a lot of opportunities. I'm saying when you're born in America, yeah, of course, because you're used to American culture and stuff. No, but even if you're not, like, there's just opportunity. You know what, what makes it hard? Well, you're saying not that because you're not an immigrant, right? No. You, you didn't have to stand in those lines, and you don't, you know. What lines? To get citizenship, and you don't have to go through that whole process. You don't, you Maybe. You weren't born in a whole nother culture coming into a completely different, you know, okay, culture Okay, so let's shock. say when you're here. Once yeah. you're here, though, and you can, like, legally work mm-hmm. up to that point. It's probably hard to get up to that point. But once you get to that point, bro, it's not really hard to make it as long as you have. You're saying that completely ignorant of what it's like. Like, what, why would you say something like that? I had to make it. Like, fucking once I was here. You're born here, here, though. Well, once you're here, I'm saying once you're here and you've passed the point of being like, you know, you're no longer mm. dealing with the hassle of getting into the country and being able to legally stay here and work. Well, let me ask you this. You think it would be difficult for you to, let's say, leave America and just go to, I don't know, wherever. Let's say Saudi Arabia and then just try to make it. Raise a family. It'd be real difficult, you know what I'm saying? Um, maybe. But once once that's already going, like, again, I'm not dis- discounting the hassle of coming here, getting acclimated. But once you're here as an American working... Well, to say it's easy is... <clears throat> I think it's just, like, nearsighted. I think it's no, very... It's just based on what my life experience, bro. Okay. That's all I can base it on. Touche. I, I can't base it on what I think other people are dealing with. Yeah. You know, but, like, once you're, like... Because you keep circling back to, like, coming here, waiting in line... Forget all that. Once you're here, though, because you have to do that. It's just it is what it is. Right. You have to come, go through the process, whatever, get your working papers. However you got to fucking deal with, you know, becoming a citizen. Yeah. Once you are, it's not that hard to make it in this country. (laughs) That's just like a weird thing to say. Why? Well, I'm telling you from personal experience because I've lived in other countries, right? Even in Western. We're talking about this country, though. I know. Hold on. Let me just finish. What I'm saying is that even so I lived in, in England for a while. Right, even that's a westernized country. Just to go there, they speak English. That's still a tough thing. You still got to get used to environment and and even their culture, even though it's similar to ours. 
it's it's just unfamiliar territory and land. So like, let's say you know, I, I'm just thinking. So my mother coming from the Philippines, which they're, well, they're, they're like were, island. Tell people. me what was hard about it though in England. Well, I'm I'm about to. That's what I was. Well, hold on. Before I get to England, I'm, what I'm saying is that my mother, you know, they're island people in the Philippines, right? They live in fucking beaches and they mm -hmm. climb coconut trees and okay, they don't really climb coconut trees, but. Um, they're island people coming over to America, right? Yeah, once you're a citizen, that doesn't just make life easy. That doesn't, it's not like, okay, everything's, you know, good. No. You got to ad adapt, adapt to English speaking country. Yeah. That's number one. I guess it's, I guess it's just perspective on what's easy. Like, what are you comparing it to, you know? Well, I, I compare it to, yeah. Well, I exactly. think financially it's easier, but I think emotional or well, cultural, I, it's two, two it'll things, be hard. Two things matter here. What you consider making it, like, what do you consider making it? You know, like, oh, you have to, you know, it's hard sure. to make it here. I think it's easy to make it here depending on what the bar is. Well, it's, and yeah, whether financially. It's hard, yeah, whether yeah. it's hard or difficult is, all right, what do you consider hard? Well, you know? I mean, I think at any point if you <clears> make it Like in England, here, what, what was considered hard you living in England? It's just unfamiliar Not knowing where territory. the fucking grocery store was? Because, well, you stick <laughs> out even just because of your accent, right? Yeah. Like you just stick out, and that's that, hard. That puts well, that's, yeah, it, yeah, it puts weird pressure on you. Yeah, 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 for sure, that's hard. Yeah. Um, I, I'm not saying that. It, I, when I, okay, hard is relative, and so I understand yeah. what you're saying. But there are aspects of like you're just you stick out anywhere you go. You don't feel right at home. Yeah, right. That's what it is. I think and it's kind of like is. even when I was in uh, the desert, like you really uh, when I say that I'm talking about the Middle East, you really stick out, right? So like, and you feel what it feels like to be. The oddball. The oddball. Yeah, yeah, yeah but you were never, saying. and that adds a weird kind of. Yeah, you were never in the, in the desert with the intent to permanently live and make a home there. Right, right. But I'm so saying I, walking. Just let's say if I'm walking downtown through, let's say Kuwait City Mall, everybody's in their ninja outfit, and I'm like this fat guy with. I'm not in a you know in their. Yeah, I think we're just starting to talk. Cultural. We're to talk about very different situations though. Cultural uh, dress. I'm and, not saying that being overseas, yeah, at war in the desert. Well, I'm not talking about war. I'm talking about just adapting to a <clears throat> culture, right? You you stick out like a sore thumb. So like I can imagine, even my my father. So my father's from Ireland. He got dropped off in Canada at 17, and then made his way into New York. No parents, right? Just had to make it. Just yeah, just make it. So he, you know, like the streets raised him. But even being from a white country, you just, you just made a good point that I want. Really, the the key indicator of what makes it hard or makes it easy, yeah, is the influence and the knowledge that you have around you. Okay, that's really it. Because if you, I don't care. Like, listen, it's it might be uncomfortable or whatever. You stick out. People don't know who you are or whatever the case is. It's unfamiliar. That's all great, but that's not hard shit. That's just something you deal with. At the it end of the day, I, it can be. I guess it's a relative to what you well, consider I know hard. From, to me, I don't consider that I, hard. I, I speak from experience. You, have you ever lived in another country? Not another country. No. Okay, but again, it, it could it could be hard. Like you know what I'm saying? Like it could no, be uncomfortable. I think, but I think it's hard because I mean, I, I see my parents every day. I talk to them. You know, it's especially like you know, if you have all your family in another country and you're just here by yourself. You know, mm -hmm. yeah, you might be doing well financially, hmm. but not everything is about money. You know, that's some what of, that's why I said. What is the bar? What has made it? I think you know, happiness is being comfortable where you are and having people that you love around you, right? So they, the saying is like, you know, money can't buy everything, and it's true. You know, what is it that you come over here, have a great life, but you have nobody to share with, and all your family's in a different place? Well, enough money could bring them over. No, because you're talking about citizenship, and you're talking about legal things, you know? I think if you're a millionaire, maybe at that point, but like... That's money, You know, bro. like so, middle, like making hmm. it here, I think, considering like from another country is like middle class. Okay, so that's the bar. That's where you would that's set the That's the bar, bar for most people, like Central America or just maybe anywhere, middle class. That's making it. It's very easy know? to get to middle class, though. Here. Yeah, I would agree. That's, but that's, that's the only not point enough, that I was trying to make. That's not enough to bring the people that you love to share that experience with them. No, you know? but now, now yeah. you're not talking about making it. Now you're talking about being exceptional. Yep. Being exceptional is probably more difficult than it making is. it. It is. Making it in this huh. country is not hard. You yeah, know I mean, I mean like, anybody can be you, middle class. You just gotta get get a little bit, you know. Like if you can legally work, bro, it's not hard to get a job. I agree. Right, I agree. It's, you can go get a job, yep. and then you can live. Like yep. that's why. What is the bar? Like, where's the bar? Yeah, yeah it should be harder to progress up that ladder. Yeah, I mean, but that's, I just, any, that's in anything here, in life, you know. You know, yeah, anybody, everybody, everybody here is middle, middle class. But that's you know? but it's not like everywhere in life though, because yeah. there are places in life where if you're not born into a certain situation in other countries, you cannot make it. You are just you are impoverished. 
yeah, it doesn't that, matter where because you're from. not part of this family. Yeah, yeah. Let me you ask you guys this. Do you guys b- think that life in general is hard or easy? Just, or is that maybe too yeah, black and white? Yeah, it swings, bro. It's a lot of gray area in there. Yeah. You could well, be very I'm saying, you could be very uh, cliche and it, say like okay, this, I overall, put it this way. Overall, put it this do you way. think it's it's I easier make, or harder? I make the choice every day for my life to be as easy as I can make it because sure. of my outlook at it, like how I react to it, you know what I mean? All right. Well, well okay. But I think I think I understand that. But it's relative too. Life, I have an, we're Americans for the most part, we all have an easy life. So life, if somebody if your kid asks you, asks is life hard yeah, and easy? Is life easy would, or hard? I would say it's both and that's what makes life beautiful. You know, you can't enjoy uh-huh. you can't not not to be uh-huh. like cliche and everything. <laughs> like you can't enjoy the good parts of life if you've never struggled, you know? I can enjoy now where I'm at right now, you know, being comfortable in life because I, I've struggled before. You know how shitty it can well, be. Let here. me ask you. Okay, so how would you answer that question though? So that that's very philosophical, and I I can I appreciate that. But if let's say your daughter or son was like, hey, well, just little, in general, let's well, say in short, yeah, a little kid, yeah, yeah, yeah life yeah. is hard. You would say that? I would say okay. life is hard. What would you say? I would say life can be hard or it can be easy depending on how the fucking you make your choices, bro. Mm. Depending on the decisions you make, man. Like, you decide how you shape your life, and you can decide to make the right steps to have an easy life, or you can decide and fuck up and make your life Do you know anybody really that has an easy life? I don't think yeah. nobody's ever had an easy life. You do. <coughs> I don't, I've never met anybody easy, that. Bro. My life's pretty easy. But Oh, you're but talking about yourself. But, but there's yeah. part, parts of your My life kids that, have an easy that's life. been hard, bro. My girl has an easy life. You heard? There's been parts of your life that's been hard, and it's gotten Re- to where you're at right to, now. Relative to where I'm at now, but relative yeah. to... Put it this way, growing up my entire life, I always had a place to live. It might not have been nice. It might have been a lot of us in one home, like one apartment, mm-hmm. but I've always had a place to live. Yep. That's a pretty easy life. There's a lot of people that don't have that. There's a lot of people that like, I've always, it might have been a little bit, it might have been a, a fucking bread and butter or bread with fucking meat sauce or it might have been a pack of ramen, but I've never had to really go hungry, obviously. Yeah. You know, like I've never. All right, so. I, I see exactly what you're saying because you're it, it, so it's relative to it has to be relative. To you have to. Well, it, well I guess. Yeah, I guess. I mean, does it? Does it? Of what if it's not relative to something else? But the thing what is, would you say? bro, would you consider that? Well, all right. So the life I'm explaining to you, yeah. a lot of people, a small apartment, but always having food. Yep. But like middle. Not class. good. Hold on. Not good food, but like noodles, yep. macaroni and cheese, some eggs, maybe some some wick cheese. Some fucking, you know, like you some know how gum it is, bro. And cheese. Some uh, juicy juice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, would you consider that hard or easy way to live? Well, okay, so I'm just asking pers- a question. Me, yeah. yeah, yeah. Me personally, I I believe overall life is hard. The life I just described to you, though, is that a hard or an easy life? Well, again, so that's relative. All right, you know, you just always deflect questions. It's mad enough. No, 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 no. Well, I'm trying to I'm trying to answer the question without being absolute. Without answering it. Is what no, you're no, no, without being absolute. <laughs> Like that's, you're, look, that's, you're looking for an absolute answer, but you won't give one. Um, well, I am giving one. I'm saying, like, I think generally speaking, life is hard, right? Just I agree with you. Life compared is to hard. What? Compared to death? Compared to, <laughs> let's say, life being easy in my in my POV, right, point of view. So, mm-hmm. I mean, you putting specifics, that's all just relative to something else. But let's say without it being relative to anything without else. Without to compare it to anything? For, except for the fact of... Whether you, let's say you're just living, right, and you're the only one on Earth, you're you're just living. I, I know it's kind of no, rhetorical, bro. but let's say you're just There's living. There's just no scenario where it's not relative to something else. You have to be able to compare mm. it to something, or you can't compare it. Like the words "hard" or "easy" are comparison words. Like, well, uh, me, yeah, you're let right. Let me ask you're you right, a, a question. Degree. So, as you're trying to say, is that a life like like a, someone who's just middle class, who's just making it right by, right? Their life is easy. They have a house. They pay their bills. Like that's an easy life. Is that what you're saying? For some. Okay. They have an easy life. For some, that's a hard life. That is a. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. It's all about perception. Like you have. I agree with you. You have just amount, just the amount, right amount of money to just to pay your bills and not do anything else. Right. You can't go out. You can't enjoy with your friends. That might be a hard life to somebody. So it's just all about perception. That's what. That's exactly the point that I'm trying to make, bro. Yeah. Like to me, my life was always easy because I compare. I tend to look at things though in a more optimistic point of view. Yeah. You know, like I tend to look at, hey, like it's. It's a blessing. Com- compla- so, complaining right. yeah, about yeah, yeah. my situation and looking at it in a negative light of it, be- it being hard exactly. isn't going to get me to where I think might be better. You know yeah, what I mean? I, I appreciate true. the sentiment of what you're saying. However, it's a fucking backhanded thing to say. No, no, no. I appreciate I'm, the sentiment, but just for conversation's sake, um, if life is easy for you, are you living your best life then? 
It can always be better, but that's also perspective. You know what well, I mean? Well, if it's life is easy, then why not? Why not what? Why aren't you living your best life? What? You're saying life is easy. Yes, my life is All pretty right, easy. So why aren't you living your optimal life? I don't have if enough life money. Is easy. I don't have enough money yet. Is it money? Yes. So you, your optimal life is what? Yachts. Traveling, <laughs> never working, bro. Cocaine everywhere. My kids having every single thing they. But that's want, what bro. I'm saying. So if yeah. if life is easy for you, how come you don't have that? Well, because I don't lack of money, bro. I'm still working at it. So then life's not easy. Life is still easy. My life is pretty easy. Like com compared no. to that, well, that, that that's no, no, if no. he doesn't com want that. If, truly, look, if I you know? if I compare it to well, he's saying he wants he it. wants if I compare it, but he doesn't it to want an it easier life. Yeah, there's always easier ways to live, and there's always harder ways to live. Yeah, I think I, I, you're, you're just trying to box my I answer think into just, something that yeah. is there's not a box for it, bro. Well, everything's well, okay. Put I think it's relative. logical to say if you say life is easy, then you're living your best life because life is my easy. life is easy. Right, you know what I'm saying. Okay, so you're my the, life is not. And that's hard. why I'm challenging that. I'm saying, well, if you're saying life is, you're easy, not challenging it, bro. I, well, I am. You can't. <laughs> I, I'm challengeable. There's no you're, flat. <laughs> you're saying life is easy. My life is easy. Yeah. Yes, but so it could be to, better compared to somebody with a hard easy. life. I think that's what you're trying to say. His life is easy, but, my, but it could be better. My life is hard compared to somebody with a really easy life. Well, I don't think this comment is going to go anywhere. Yeah, <laughs> well, it's not <laughs> though, because again, you're yeah, trying, it's you're everyone's trying to, perception. Is everyone's that's the perception. thing? Is like you're trying to take something that's relative and put it into an absolute box, which is not possible. Yeah. No, no, no. When somebody no, when somebody says to me life is easy, I'm saying okay. So if life is easy for you. Then success is easy. Then right. you're in your. So you're, you think you're your in, life is hard? Why? Hold on, just hold on, wait, wait, just let, let me why finish. Not kill don't, don't cut me. Don't cut me off. Just let me finish. If you're saying life is easy, well then, I'm. Uh, I'm assuming when you're when somebody says life is easy that you're living up to your potential. In every aspect of life, if it's that easy, mm. that's, yeah, that's all are, I'm saying. Those are just different things. Yeah. What do you mean? Like, all right. So you're saying your life is hard? I believe so. So why even go through with it? What do you mean? If life is hard, how do you have these nice clothes and nice hats? How hard can well, your life be? Well, that's all relative. Because he worked for it, thank you. and that was hard. Thank you. That's <laughs> a, thank you for saying that, bro. It's all relative, bro. It's all perspective. relative. Perspective. So yes, it's all you're perspective. Nice. It's all relative. Yeah. It might not be nice to me. It is, though. Because you, you, <laughs> you can buy uglier shit and cheap shit that you don't like. But your life is pretty easy, and no, you can afford to splurge like, on things you want. No, no, no. That's why your glasses say Christian Dior. Because <laughs> your life is not that hard. <laughs> That's very, very nearsighted to say. <laughs> Maybe. Because well, cause you it don't, can be nearsighted. It doesn't make it wrong. Well, you know what I'm saying? You don't know what anybody else struggles with. You don't know what my life is like. Right? Right. Yeah, okay. Yeah. It's relative, though. Well, yeah. it doesn't matter what you struggle with for the sake of this conversation. You know what I mean, if you're saying that your life is hard, I'm telling you that it can't be that hard because there's still a lot of good things going for it. From your perspective. Right. So I'm right. telling you that my life is easy from my perspective. Right. And I'm challenging yeah. that. I'm challenging your glasses. Okay, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm, I'm just saying for conversation's sake. Yeah, God. but that's I'm not, don't I'm get not defensive over it. No, 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 I'm, I'm, just, I'm not. Def if anything, you know, I thought oh. you were going to say don't get personal because you got a little defensive because you took it no, 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 personal, no. like the glasses. I'm care. just telling you what I see. Like, if life is that hard, so your your idea of then I guess easy is just brand name shit or um that could be part of it. You know what I mean? I just it's all yeah, to me. Yeah. It's just relative, bro. Right? Like yeah, I when I, like when I hear issues. life is hard, yeah. I think of somebody that I would. Think has a hard life, like somebody that doesn't I think know. Everybody has a hard life. Somebody I think life doesn't is know really hard. <laughs> yeah, I know you said that, which yeah. we just disagree there fundamentally. But like to me, there are hard lives, which yeah. you don't know where you're gonna your meal's gonna come from. You don't know if you mm -hmm. have a place to sleep tonight. You know, like you don't have a, you don't even have a job to have a means to get out of whatever hole that you're in. Sure. You know, like whatever you're dealing with, mm -hmm. you don't even have a path yet to get out of it. <clears throat> to me, that's a hard life to deal with. You know, like me waking yeah. up deciding. What I want to eat for dinner is not a hard life. There are, you know, how I'm going to entertain the family this weekend. Do we want to do this? Do we want to do that? These are all things that make life easy for me. These are small, they're not even problems. I can't even put the world, mm. the word first world problems on it. They're just so like, you relate easy life to, let's say, amounts of money and stuff like that. No, I mean, that's 100% part of it. You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely part of it. That's what you're describing. Um, you're saying, fight, you know, I, I don't, don't put it this way. M remove money aside. Sure. I don't wake up every day wondering if anybody cares about me. I don't wake up wondering if I'm loved. I don't wake up wondering if the people that I love know that I love them. You know, like there's a lot of people that wake up that haven't talked to their 
family members in years and they don't even know if they could reach out or you know sure. if they don't have a support system. These are all things that make my life easy. Er. Or just easy. E. <laughs> just keep going in circles, man. Yeah. Well, most of them, you know, it, well, it's, it's personal perspective. So this I, is I what talking to Jay is like. Bro. I, I think in in Josh's perspectives, and correct me if I'm wrong, aka the truth. I think in Josh's perspective, from what it sounds like to me, is that as long as you have, you know, the basics of life, meaning shelter, food, clothing, blah blah, blah your life is easy. Life could be harder. Yeah, life, right. Okay. Right. I think in, you say life is is hard in general. Can you describe that? Can you? Like, uh, what, do, what do you mean by that? I have a different outcome. Well, I, was thinking that I think that everything goes to perception. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think yeah. life is hard. That's you what know? we're talking about. I mean, even to be middle class, you know, I think that's hard because you're just budgeting everything. You want more. You know you want more, mm. you know, but you're maybe stuck in a place, somebody that, you know, works in corporate and their only their job is just to get paid to just be a secretary. You but know? are you stuck there, or do you have a choice? Sometimes you don't, man. And you, not everybody can make it. That that's the thing about life. Not everybody can be a CEO. Not everybody can be. There has to be middleman people. There has to be middle class for there to be rich and poor. And that's the untruth about life. You know, there's people that have to uh, be trash. Nothing wrong with cleaning the trash. There's people that have to do cleaning houses. That's that, nice for you, you know? to say. So there's nothing wrong with that, and that's what I'm saying. That that's a hard life, you know. And people want more, but unfortunately, that but can't you know, happen. you know what can those people though? I mean, somebody that might clean trash for a living or clean houses for a living. Yeah. What is stopping them from becoming their own boss and doing it that way? But what and, if everyone thought like that? Well, then you'd eventually. I mean, everybody can think like that. You know, I get I get what you're getting at. Like you need workers. Exactly. But you know what happened is like. Babies are made. People grow up. Teenagers are born. Young uh, young adults need jobs, and they're not ready to take risks like that. Yeah. You know, so I think just the natural progression of life is going to give you workers that are needed. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, I get what you're saying. Like, is it realistic to think everybody could think no. like that? No. Exactly. But at the end of the day. I know what you're trying to say. Yeah. You, you got to want it. It's not because. You're, exactly, there, because, you're there because of yourself. Exactly. Which you're right. Correct. You, you, you have to be. It's yeah. like, you know, like, I have people that, you know, friends of mine that will ask me, just whatever, bro. Like, for... Hey, how can I do this? Way you're doing that? Like I see you doing this and it worked out. How can I do it? It's like, bro, the first step is you have to like really want to do it. And like wanting to do it is not me doing it for you. It's like, exactly. You know, like you have to go and the same way and that I did it, it bro. Yeah, you yeah. have to go and do it and want it. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? But I mean, I think yeah, it's, it's all going back to perception. I think you know those. That's a hard. That's maybe for them. That's hard knowing that you know I can become better, but I'm not, and I'm just staying here in the same place for the next forty years working at the same company. See, I, I think so. My definition of hard has nothing to do with money. It has nothing to do with, let's say, I, I think social pressure is hard. I think um, a sense of belonging, like those kind of things are hard. I think relationships are well, hard. Like I said, fucking, that's a big thing for me, waking with, up knowing that yeah, with, I belong, just, my family, like there's support, yeah, yeah, there's yeah. structure, there's care. That's um, a big one for me, bro. Uh, f you know, with, with all of the pressures of life, this is outside of the monetary shit, right? I think that that weighs on society. I think it it weighs on me to some degree. What do you mean by social pressures? Um, just like again, the 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 wanting to uh, feel like you're accepted and belong to a, to having friendships, uh, relationship building, stuff like that. Um, there's a, there's a lot of pressure there. I think it's hard to keep <laughs> relationships though and friendships. No, it, no and yes. Um, because if it's, hard, if it's hard, you probably shouldn't keep here, it. Here's the thing: Be because of the of what's faddish, because of what's chic, and uh, let's say uh, in style at the time, that adds pressure, right, for the average person to again want to have a sense of belonging, right? Where like let's say make, whether it's logical or not, nah, but you whether it's be, logical to you spend have money the on a fucking because everybody has a Nike sweater on. My kid, yeah, I get it, bro. Like I, maybe, yes. That's because that's something as a parent that you try to being a parent to shoot. Because now at our age, I feel like you know it's wrong. Not even maybe wrong is not the right word, but yeah. you know you don't want to be the person that feels like they need a label to feel good about themselves. You know what I mean? Like right. you don't want you don't want to need your shirt to say Nike on it to feel confident in who you are. Yeah. So when your kids come up to you and you're like, "Oh, Dad, you know, I really want this Nike Tech sweater. Everybody has it. Come on, can I please get one?" I want to be able to show you the fucking same thing that doesn't have a logo and have you believe in yourself and why it doesn't matter. But then there's another part of me that grew up poor 
and didn't get anything that I want to just give my kid everything they want. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? That's, well, I look, so, that's something that I deal with yeah. as a fucking parent a lot, bro. I can see that a lot. I can definitely, yeah, yeah I, I relate, relate to that. To that I know, I know you see, yeah. I know your daughter wears Jordans and shit too, and you're like, yeah. Because it's like, bro, you could find her a pair of shoes that look exactly the same but don't have a Jordan logo. Yeah, and it she, probably comes from the same fucking. She couldn't be bothered though. Yeah, well, it's I'm like, not wearing kids those. don't understand that, you know? So it's like, why would, even, why would you even go through that if they're not going to under, even understand that? But you know what's funny is there are some kids that do understand that. It's very minimal. And uh, like my cousin, I have a cousin, his name is Ronnie. And he would always, he grew up the same way we did, mm-hmm. but bro, that kid didn't give a flying fuck what he wore. And he, you know what though? When we were young and kids, and like fucking, if we saw cute girls walking down the street, he was always the first one to be like, bro, I'll go talk to them right now. Yeah. More confident than anybody I've ever met in my life. Yeah. yeah. No shame in his game, bro. Like, doesn't care about looking silly, doesn't care how he's viewed, and never gave a shit about like that, um, the social pressure, bro. Well, that's inner right. confidence, so, you know? Yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. Is like, that's kind of like the goal where I like my children and even myself to yeah. be at. It's hard to get there, though, bro. And that's just, a, yeah. I think that's a very lonely road. Um, it is a very lonely road. Yeah, because like you, he, he, the whole crowd is going this way, and you're you're opting to go the other way yeah. just to not conform. Uh, no, that's and, not an opt. But here's the thing: he's welcomed everywhere. Like he's welcome in any crowd. He was never an outcast. Okay, well, I guess what I yeah, what, yeah. what I'm saying you're is that talking like, about success. success. And anybody can like kind of oh. play the game, right? They can they can uh, be the not yes man. Oh, like, I don't know what the word is. Like yeah. they can um, act. Fall in line. Like yeah, just, just fall, fall in line crowd. and conform, right, to society and whatever that means. Um, it's it's hard not to. It's hard, it's hard to stand on your own two feet. It's hard to have your own opinions. It's hard to – that's what I think when, when life is hard, right? Mm. Um, I Personally, like I have a lot of, <laughs> you know, uh, off-the-wall opinions about things. And, uh, and you know this. I'm not scared to express those things. That's what defines who I am as a person, right? I don't – I don't give a shit what anybody thinks about it. You know what I'm saying? Um, there are other things where I do kind of conform. You do, though. What's that? You care about when you say things that how people, what people think about them. Yeah, because I recognize the fact that, you know, again. It's normal. It's normal to care yeah, what people yeah, think sure. about you. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I don't want people to take the wrong, what I'm saying in the wrong vein, even though what I'm saying might be controversial or, you know, not the popular view or, or vote. Yeah. Um, that's what I, I guess, you know, bringing this full circle, I guess that's what I, what I find hard, you know, like I, I believe a lot of people just, they go with the easy kind of like, find out what you like and what you don't like and what you really think versus what's popular, what's chic, what's faddish. What's going to get the most people to agree with you. And yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not. the easy route. Yeah. So that's when I say like, okay, going back to again, immigrants coming here, you know, they grew up in a whole different culture and a whole different you know, my, again, my, I'm th- when I think of my mother, my mother, the Filipino culture is so different than American culture. It's like mm. built on respect and like, you know, family. there's like ranking and family and and the American culture, not to shit on the American culture, but I'm about to, is very liberal in the sense of like, oh, if you don't like it, fuck them. And, you know, that's just it. Mm. And I, I could, I could, that would, that would weigh on me, you know, like yeah. coming from a, a different walk of life into, into American culture. But anyway, that's my, yeah, it's, it my can tie. definitely be an adjustment. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, there are pros and cons in, in every culture, though, you know? I believe like there's those... more cultures that are similar, like outside of America. I think America's the oddball. Yeah, I agree. Compared I agree. to just the rest of the world. Like a lot yeah. of cultures are built on f- just family values respect. and very conservative yeah, and respect. Very conser- very you come to a, yeah, you come to America and it's like the Las Vegas of the globe. It's kind of well. Here's the thing: is America it, in it's, it's free to exactly you know yeah, that's free kinda, to do anything. That's you want. The, that's the that's what makes America so beautiful, bro. Is that you don't have to conform yeah. to some values and family hierarchy that you don't agree with just because you were told to. You know? They can be. They can be to some people. But just because, you know, like, family structure and, like, for example, religion is big in a lot of other countries. Everything. Just because, you know, like, religion and, um, you know, family structure and fucking leader, like, a hierarchy of a family is important to you doesn't mean it's important to somebody else. Well, I think In America, a- is, if you still value those things, you can mm. still live that way. Yeah, I mean, but I think, like, those those That's values saying, aren't man. anything bad that will affect your life in any, in any way. You know, it's respecting your family... Let me give you an example. In another culture, it might be a good thing to just, like, it might be part of that culture. If your father says something, 
You don't ever question it. You do it because your father said so. That's the way it is. Yep. That can definitely be a detrimental trait in your life, bro. If you're afraid to ever question anything, regardless of whether or not you think it's right, that's not a good way to go about living as a grown man. Yeah, yeah. Right? Like, what if Jay just told you, like, tomorrow, like, hey, from now on, every customer we go to, we're going to try to scam them. I'm the leader. This is what I say. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, It that, depends on the man. <clears throat> You know, it depends it on the It does father. depend on the men. But yeah. not every father in all of these cultures is yeah. good with of good course. morals and good guidance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, at least in America, if you're – most of the time, I think I'm a good father. I expect my kids that they're going to follow me and won't question me. And when they do question me, it's not because I'm not a bad man. It's because they might not understand why I'm making that decision. But you don't want them to not be able or to fear questioning you. Because yeah. those same good fathers in other cultures will be good fathers here. Yeah. You know, but there are still shitty fathers in other cultures, too, that – you got to question and maybe disagree with, yeah. you know? Or, like, think of other cultures, bro. Like, fucking a woman might not have a choice in who she marries. Like, her dad might just sell her to a rich person and have a strong family alliance. Yeah. I don't know if I agree. I'm not saying yeah. that it's wrong, yeah, yeah, yeah. but yeah. I can see how women might not want that for them here. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I can think of, like, some certain American... Uh, it's, like, pros and cons, like, depending on how you view it. So, yeah, like, in America, just, you have the... Like balance, bro. Yeah, you, you, you have the, the option... Um, where if you make enough money in America, the law doesn't necessarily apply to you. Like, you can circumvent the law just based on money alone versus, let's say, in another country, um, oh, it's yeah. like... Yeah, <laughs> the law is law. Uh, yeah, the law I'll is give the you law. a great example, bro. O.J. Simpson. No, just simple. Something like we can all relate to. Bail, bro. Bail. Like, you could be yeah. sitting in jail for a week longer than I do just because... You didn't have a hundred dollars to bail yourself out, right? Exactly. You know what I mean? To me, that's fuck. That's wild, that's bro. Yeah. That's so crazy, bro. Yeah. That's crazy. That's at its simplest form. Never mind, like fucking when you get into hiring attorneys and fucking tax loopholes and all of these ways that having tax money loopholes. gets you out of jail. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And yeah. that's like uh, we, we've always talked about this. That that's the biggest uh, privilege in America is not necessarily white, black, whatever. It's always. Income. Of course it's income, man. That's it's always, why, you know, it's, it's always it's, money. It's, it's definitely it's fucking, money. it's always that, That's so exactly how O.J. Simpson man. got off. It didn't matter if he was black, white. I you make that kind of money, you can pay a lawyer to put time into your case yep. versus, let's say, a poor white guy. He's, it doesn't matter that he's white. He's yep. poor. Yep. He's poor, exactly. He's, you're 100% right. Yeah. Exactly. Economy. Yeah, man, we just totally like, transitioned to a whole different conversation. <laughs> yeah, it flowed, though. It flowed, bro. It flowed, you know. It flowed. I actually appreciate the conversation. That was a... Different, yeah, man. It's I'm just glad that like you're even though your life is as hard as you say it is, you can put time on a Sunday to fucking sit <laughs> no. bullshit with a microphone. Hold on, wait, wait, wait. let's not confuse. Two uh, things. I didn't say my life is hard. I said I said life in general is hard. If my daughter asked me, hey, is life like difficult or easy? I would tell her life is life is hard. Yeah, I would agree. life is hard. I would agree. But you have to you have to learn to overcome. That's yep. just what it is. But the thing is, is bro, the, the truth is there are. There are parts that are going to be easy, and there are parts that are going to be hard. You yep. know what I mean? Like it's going to be it's going to be hard when a boy breaks up with you. It's going to be hard. It's going to hurt, and it's going right. to be hard when your friends start acting different, or yeah. you know. And then there's things that the the problem with it is, bro, is when things are easy, you don't realize that it's easy. It's just happening. You know what I mean? Like you don't realize. Like, listen, you got Jordans. You know what I mean? Like, you wear Jordans every day. Mm. You have enough clothes to stay warm in the winter. Like, all got, of these things you that you don't know, yeah. they're just easy. You know what I mean? Like, your college is paid for. To you, that's just life. To a lot of people, it's hard because they can't pay for college. Yep, you know? True. So, like, we notice the easy thing. It's like poker, bro. Everybody remembers when they lose with aces. People don't tell you how they won with aces. You know what I mean? Right. They just expect <laughs> it. Right. It's just, like, exactly. normal. So... Yep. Anyways, <laughs> it's wrap up time. Yeah, Let's you good? Anything else? Make sure you guys check out Kevin. He's Kevin underscore Tay with two Y's. That's T A Y Y on Instagram, on AKA TikTok, abs. AKA, AKA Abs, AKA, <laughs> AKA Closer of the Year, AKA Pex, Dick Root, whatever you want to call him. He's got all the lines that a statue has. Um, anything you want to add, sir? Nah, thank you guys for having me over. 